This is the final battle. At last, everything will be revealed. You are the chosen one who will reap the rewards. This is your last chance to see it all. The biggest, brightest, and the best finish last. Here are the exclusive bombshells you came for. The most astonishing inside information you've heard yet. Now you unlock the grandest treasures of all and learn the best kept secrets of the kings of the consoles. G4 holds the keys to all the riches of E3 and is the only place that can bring you this one-of-a-kind peek behind the walls of the Game Maker strongholds. Which games will reap the glories and accolades? Which games will inherit the thrones at the top of each genre pedestal? Watch now and find out. G4's coverage of the final day of E3 08 begins now. here with Olivia Munn, and in just a bit, we'll be checking in with Adam Sessler and Morgan Webb, who are back on the show floor. For the next couple of hours, we're serving up all the gaming exclusives you want. We're not rehashing this week's news at all. Today's show is all new, and it's more of the good stuff like this late-breaking report from Joystick.com. Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic is going on yes. online. The rumors are true. Multiplayer lightsabers. <laughs> it's very exciting. One of the most popular Star Wars titles will become an MMO, it is yeah. official. That is huge. Now later in the show, we'll have live demos from our studio and the Los Angeles Convention Center, as well as interviews, breaking news, and of course, some in-depth reports. In years past, it was pretty easy to weasel your way inside E3, but those days are long gone. We are your only ticket inside the biggest event in gaming. You're welcome. <laughs> in this hour, we'll experience free running, first person style, with Electronic Arts' bold new game, Mirror's Edge, the action-adventure thriller is expected to be released later this year, but today, we've got the demo for you. Then, Tom Clancy takes a break from running and gunning and takes to the skies for Hawks. We'll take you straight into the cockpit for this new flight simulator later in the show. And then things take a dark turn when we descend into Project Origin. We're going to show off this supernatural suspense story that's probably going to be scaring gamers this fall. <laughs> While we hold down the fort here, our friends from X-Play are across town scrounging up even more games. Let's check in with Morgan and Adam, who are at the Los Angeles Convention Center. Guys? Thanks, guys. We're here at the Los Angeles Convention Center, and there's still plenty to cover on day three. All through today's show, we'll have live demos of some of E3's biggest titles. Coming up, we'll look at two new Tom Clancy games, Hawks and End War. We'll also go in-depth with two of Electronic Arts' must-see titles, Mirror's Edge and Spore. And if you love bloody slow-motion shootouts, you have to see Project Origin, the sequel to Fear. But we're not the only ones here today. Zach Selwyn and the rest of our G4 commandos are on the show floor checking out every game that's on display. Zach, what do you have for us? Hey, thanks, guys. As you can see, I'm literally working my ass off down here at E3 on the floor doing a little research, if you know what I mean. Just a second, I'm going to retire up to the G4 Coke Zero Gamers Lounge and talk to some WWE Tag Team Champions. Over to you, Kristen. Thanks, Zach. Today, I'm going to be heading on to the floor to Sega to check out the latest in the Siege series. Space Siege, and here at Microsoft, I'm going to be getting a look at Viva Pinata, Trouble in Paradise. What's going on with you, Chris? A thousand thank yous, Kristen. All right, well, we've seen a lot of stuff, but there is still plenty more to see. I am all over the floor, like Paris Hilton's underpants. And if you think you've seen everything, you are the wizard of stupidity. Uh, so stick around, there's plenty more here. But right now, let's hop over to Blair for a sec. Chris, I think this guy's working out some domestic issues behind me, but coming up, I got Star Wars The Clone Wars for you, but first, let me introduce you guys to the lovely Alice in Hayslip. Thanks, Blair. You're looking handsome today. And I'm going to check out Nintendo's new Monster Lab. Maybe a few other surprises. We'll see. Back to you guys. Thanks, Allison. I'm looking handsome today, too. It's cool. <laughs> it's all right. Hey, you look handsome. Thanks, Olivia. Olivia Munn, everybody. She's gorgeous. Oh. Clap for her hotness. Uh, or Clap not. For Clap for her hotness. We'll also be checking in with Blitz. I need it. Who's our G4 super fan on the floor later on in the show. Clap for Kevin's hotness. Yeah. 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 That's they what E3 has turned into, people. It's our fourth day. But now, <laughs> X-Place, Adam Sessler is back on the show floor with a unique new game from Electronic Arts. 
Mirror's Edge takes the first person genre to dizzying new heights. Take it away, Adam. Mirror's Edge, the vivid first-person action adventure, is set to leap onto the scene. You play as Faith, a messenger who acrobatically bounds from rooftop to rooftop using parkour. Through this unique perspective, you'll also battle enemies, but by using athletics and smarts rather than guns. In a world under the thumb of a corrupt government, there's only one important rule. Don't look down. Man, I've been waiting for this one. Joining us for this very special look at Mirror's Edge, producer Nick Chan, and thanks for dropping by and bring one of the most amazing games I've seen at the show. Thank um, you. Before we get to the story, yeah. I want you to start describing the gameplay sure. because it's unlike anything else. Yeah, we really wanted to create something completely different. Uh, the big thing for us is when you see a screenshot of Mirror's Edge, you know it's Mirror's Edge. And you know, you look at the visual style and it's very different and unique. And I'll talk to you about how we've got to that in a second. But the, where we really started was, was with movement. Um, as you're seeing here, it's just very simple controls. We spent lots of time in, the, in what we call the white box phase, um, really looking at the controls, uh, getting walk, jog, run, all the basics right and keeping the basic controls very simple. So what you're seeing here is a jump. Pete's just jumping over something and it's all done on L1. It's all context sensitive. If he moves forward now and starts running, you see that you push forward uh, and you automatically start to run. So it's all about keeping those basic controls very simple. The beauty of Mirror's Edge is it, you're only limited by your skill. Faith is a completely normal person in an extraordinary situation. She doesn't have any superhuman powers, but the big thing is is that you're only limited by your skill. You don't power her up, she doesn't suddenly become uh, bigger or better in any way. You just get better through your skill. So what you're seeing here is, is the first level of the game. Um, you know, um, all the sort of basic movements are there. And, and I think the great thing is it's easy to get into, but it's difficult to master. And that's the key to the game. Now, of course, uh, the use of red here seems to help the player indicate yeah. where is the direction they're going, so you're not trying to use a big HUD yeah. to, to try to get you Exactly. Somewhere. There's no HUD in the game at all. Uh, what you can see is that very small dot in the center of the screen. That's what we call a reticule. We're using that uh, to reduce simulation sickness. We've done a lot of, of research on that, and you need a focal point. If you know ballerinas, when they do their pirouettes, exactly. they look at a focal point, and that reduces the simulation sickness. What you'll also see is this really wide field of view. Our field of view is set, set to 90, whereas a lot of first-person games will be set to 50. Again, uh, our levels are built with that in mind, but it also helps to reduce simulation sickness. Gotta get this job All right, now, I think we we're about to hit some balancing here. Yeah. And, and you're actually you know, going to be using the six-axis controller to make Absolutely. this happen. So six-axis is used to balance. You'll, you'll uh, use the controller to balance as you go across. You'll also use it to forward roll as you land. You can do a forward roll, and then you can pull it back to disarm uh, when in combat. So now, now that we've seen a little bit, uh, yeah. the environment is yeah. obviously very striking. This is yeah, one of the few games that isn't dark in both its look and its tone. Yeah. Yeah. Which, where is she and how is that tying into the So the big thing is, is the city as you see it is, uh, basically the game is played out through face size. That was really important to us. Uh, sort of the biggest analogy, what I'm Pete. The biggest analogy is, uh, that's one of the bigger jumps in the game and, and there's lots of those. Um, you know, this is an, an example of the, uh, a very monitored society, there's media just checking out what's going on. And, and Faith's in a city where um, it's a very monitored society, um, there's, there's, there's a lot of laws, uh, there's no, but there's no crime. So the people have sort of uh, accepted the fact that they can have a comfortable life but will have some restrictions. But in particular Faith and, and, and parts of the society kind of rebelled that, so they moved to the edge of the society. And, and, and Faith is what we call a runner. People on the edge don't like to use monitored um, communication, so they use runners to pass messages um, across the city, and that's what Faith does. What you're seeing is these red elements in the game. Um, what we call, that's what we call runner vision. Um, so she, it's, it's how she sees it's, it's the world. It's not really there in the exactly. world. Exactly, it's how she sees things. She's become so adept as a runner, how she gets through situations, that she sees that, and it's kind of a hint to get you through the levels. Now, uh, obviously Pete's actually playing this very well, but yeah. since there's no HUD, yeah. what will be the indicator that you're hurt and that you need to you know, do so, some healing? Uh, just as you saw right there, he took a uh, slight bit of damage as she landed, so what will, uh, as you take more and more damage, the color will be drained out of the world, uh, and, and that's kind of the indicator that you're, you're taking health damage. But it's replenished as you continue. So, you, so you, you want to keep doing well to make sure the game yeah. stays pretty for you almost. In Absolutely. I mean, the big thing for us is you're playing it through faith, through faith's eyes. The sort of big analogy that we give, it's like it's like being in an action movie instead of watching one. And that's yeah, and, very, and, and very and that's important. One important point I want to get because we haven't seen any combat here, but there yeah. is combat in yeah. the game. It's not just over an obstacle. Absolutely. Course. You're going to see it shortly. Uh, it's just coming up. We just got a few, a few more rooftops uh, and it'll be coming up. You know, you don't have to do any combat in this game. In, in fact, there's an achievement for not doing any. 
Um, so it, the, that, again, that's the great thing. There's a great choice to the user. Oh, uh, we just missed the jump oh, there, it, it, but that's it, it okay. makes my stomach just up <laughs> into my mouth. Uh, absolutely. Yeah, we're going to come back in just one yeah. second because this does totally. load Totally, and really again, quickly. load times are really quick. The other thing with the game of this kind is the checkpoints are very short, so you don't go back to the beginning of the level every time, and that again is very important to us. Um, <clears throat> but as I say, just coming back to combat, um, you know, there is, it is in the game, it's up to you. If you have the skill to avoid it, that, that's completely there for you. What we're going to see here is the first sort of element of combat. You're going to try and see this cop. He's going to slide, kick him, uh, and take him out. There we go. This is whoa. And we're seeing the desaturation of the color and right there. And he's going to take oh. him out. So he pressed triangle there to do a death arm. He now has that gun if he chooses to use it. He's given it away because he wants to do a big jump. Guns slow you down, so you can't always get to the big jumps. So you, but you, you have the opportunity to use it and then throw it away and move on. Again, Whoa. he's doing the disarm here. That's one of the disarm moves Great in the job. game. That is absolutely now. amazing. Um, so when do you think that we're going to get a chance to get our hands on Mirror's Edge? So Mirror's Edge will be out towards the end of the year on PlayStation 3, Xbox 360, and on PC. Um, and, and we're really excited about it. Um, I, I, can, I can understand because I'm very excited. This is thank an you. absolutely special treat, Nick, for you guys to bring this by. Uh, Can I thank you enough? Yep, thank Good you luck much. with the game. All right. Well. After that piece of awesomeness, let's go back to you guys in the studio. Thanks, Adam. Parkour will leap across platforms when Mirror's Edge drops later this year. It's time for our X poll question. What do you think of Mirror's Edge? A, love the first person gameplay. B, the art style is gorgeous. Or C, I'm afraid of heights. To vote, text E3 to G4TXT, that's 44898, or log on to G4TV.com slash E3. We will have the results later in the show. Right now, let's check back at the show because Allison's hands are full of Wiimotes and she's playing the new title, Monster Lab. Thanks. Allison here with Devin Deprenner, who's going to talk to us about Nintendo Wii's new game, Monster Lab. So, what is Monster Lab about? Monster Lab is all about being a mad scientist, doing a ton of different experiments. Um, we put the player in the role of an apprentice in the Mad Science Alliance. And they get to do all these fun, wacky experiments to build different types of monster parts. Then they get to put those monster parts together in their own monster. They build it however they want, you know, whatever looks cool. Um, then they send that monster out into the world uh, to collect more ingredients to build better, bigger, cooler looking parts. And they do this by doing um, different challenges out in the world. They help out people. They give them um, parts back, as, or sorry, ingredients back as well. And uh, by battling enemy monsters. Um, and the whole idea is that they built this awesome uber robot that uh, will take on the evil Baron Marty's monster, who was the fourth member of the Mad Science Alliance, who went corrupt with power after uh, learning all the three sciences and has taken over the Uncanny Valley. Um, so it's a really great game. We've got six different regions in there, 156 different monster parts. So a crazy amount of combinations you can make of monsters. And they're all so incredibly unique. We've got whale tails for arms. We've got uh, brains and, and bottles for heads, trash bag heads, rocket legs, just crazy amount of stuff. So it's out on the Wii and DS. Uh, it's coming out the week of Halloween. Perfect. Wonderful. That sounds like so much fun. Back to you guys. Thanks, Allison. Monster Lab will also be available on the DS and the PS2 later this fall. Now, Kevin has been keeping tabs on another of our friends now at the show, right, Kev? That's right, Olivia. Um, G4 broke E3's no fan rule when we snuck our old stick cam pal Flitz into the show, and now you can all live vicariously through his G4 Super Fan Reports. I did it. I got it. Hey guys, this is Flitz. I'm still here at E3 2008 having a game gasmic time. I've explored the floors. I've played all the big hits. I've played Resistance 2. I've played Resident Evil 5. I've played Street Fighter 4. But if you're not here at E3, you may miss some of the sleeper hits. I found my favorite sleeper hit, and it goes by the name of X-Blades. What is X-Blades? I bet you're wondering. Well, you take three pigtails, a scantily clad girl, some armor, a thong, and some metal boots. Combine that with a feel of Sonic the Hedgehog, Princess Mononoke, and Heavenly Sword, and then you have you have X-Blades. It was developed by Topware Games. It's been distributed by South Peak. So, you want something exciting? You want something you've never heard of before? Look to your Xbox 360 and PC. It's coming fall 2008. Nice, that looks pretty good. Thanks, Flitz. Keep up the good work and don't get arrested. 
I did it. I turned. <laughs> E3 will return in a moment with more gaming from the floor. We've got Tom Clancy's exciting new venture into the realm of air combat with Hawks. That's right. And then later, the acting horror genre has a new name, and it's Project Origin, the slow motion bloody spiritual sequel to Fear. We're just getting started on day three of E308 Live. That's right. To get up to the second E308 news, exclusive videos, screenshots, and more, go to g4tv.com slash E3. We'll see you in a minute. <laughs> E308 Live is brought to you by Wendy's. It's way better than fast food. It's Wendy's. Wendy's 99 cent crispy chicken sandwich is made with all white meat. Because if it's not all white meat, it's a gray area. And I don't like gray areas in my chicken. The 99 cent crispy chicken sandwich. It's way better than fast food. It's Wendy's. I created Death Race six years ago. I now have as many viewers as the Super Bowl. On August 22nd. It's all about ratings, fast cars, pretty women. Prisons become stadiums. Go, go, go! Criminals become players. Weapons are up. And death becomes sport. Get the choppers in the air! Welcome to the jungle! Wakey, wakey! You can burn me, you can shoot me, but you can't kill me! Death Race, rated R, starts August 22nd. Now more than ever, you want to get the most for your money. Look no further than the rugged V6 2008 Kia Sportage. Fuel efficient, 5-star safety rated, backed by an industry-leading warranty, and it's priced about $6,000 less than a Toyota RAV4 Limited. Or to put it another way, a whole year's worth of groceries less. The Kia Model Year End Event. It's money well saved. Now get 0% APR or up to 3,000 cash back on the 2008 Sportage. Your teeth are a living part of your body. And over time, the enamel begins to weaken from the inside. But now you can help rebuild your teeth. New Trident Extra Care, the only gum with Recaldin, a unique form of calcium that penetrates into and strengthens tooth enamel. Trident Extra Care, chew strong. Horsepower is here, and no leading synthetic oil delivers more power than Q Horsepower. Unleash all your horses. Prepare for the ultimate Stargate movie experience. I am the new sovereign. Be grateful. I'll get right on that. Join Major General Jack O'Neill and the SG-1 team as they face their greatest enemy. I'm good. Not good enough. Stop it! Stargate Continuum on DVD and Blu-ray High Def July 29th. I really got sick and tired of every day when I met somebody. They would look at the top of my head and then they'd look me in the face. I think my hair looks better now than it did when I was in my 20s. Hey, some people are beautiful, Bob but it wasn't for me. I feel great about myself now. I look the way I think I'm supposed to look. It was like a dream come true for me because I wanted my own hair back. The Bosley treatments absolutely exceeded my expectations, no question about it. This is all me, so I'm thrilled. I finally enjoy getting a haircut. Now that I see the results, I wish I would have done it four or five years sooner. I'm really excited about having uh, my hair back. When it comes to going bald, you now have a choice. To find out more about this clinically proven permanent hair loss solution from Bosley, call to receive this free guidebook, Medical Report, and DVD. This is the only permanent solution to hair loss. Choose to do something about your hair loss. Call 1-800-986-3625. That's 1-800-986-3625. Or go online to bosley.com today. This August, X-Play's got game as Adam and Morgan travel the globe bringing you the biggest gaming conventions in the world. You want to see them and we've got them. Starting with G4's fan favorite award show, g Then on to Germany's Leipzig, Europe's battleground for console domination. And PAX, Washington's huge indie gamer culture party. You just got done playing Metal Gear Solid 4. I gotta say, this is now one of the must-have games. This August, X-Play's got game all month long starting August 7th. Part of G4's Stay Out of the Sun Summer. Now after watching G4's coverage of E308, I've seen a lot of good looking games that will be coming out soon, especially around the holiday season. And that brings up a very important question. Do I file for bankruptcy now or what? 
Well, first of all, Sean, thanks for the question. Thanks for that. Yeah, I would say buy all the games and crap you want and then file because yeah. it's, you're <laughs> essentially you getting it, it for free. It. Yeah, that's right. Well, okay, look, you could also try signing up for a game rental service like Blockbuster or Gamefly. Yeah. Either one of those You're those definitely going to yeah. need a rental service this holiday. Yeah, rental service, definitely. So you guys, you are watching day three of E308 Live presented by Wendy. <laughs> It's actually day four for me. It's the final day of E3, and believe it or not, thankfully, there are new game announcements still coming in. That's right. As always, G4 is your home base for all the exclusive first looks and hands-on demos of the newest titles. We've got the inside track on everything at E3, so leave the controller down for just a second longer. Games will be there. Just watch. <laughs> Time to blow stuff up. Tom Clancy's military and espionage novels have been successfully adapted into movies and translated into killer games by Ubisoft. Now Clancy is taken to the skies with Hawks and Adam Sessler is back at the show and at the controls of one of the most anticipated new releases of the year. Later this year, Tom Clancy and Ubisoft are set to show you a new kind of battlefield in Hawks. In this combat fighting sim, you'll be taking to the skies over Brazil with over 50 fighter jets at your disposal. And you won't do it alone either. You can play co-op with three of your friends or dogfight with the world in online multiplayer. Later this year, get ready to truly feel the need for speed. Just don't end up like Goose. Joining us today is Thomas Simon, lead designer for Hawks. Thank you so much for coming by Thank and bringing you. the game. Thank you. Now, uh, just at the outset, this game is amazing looking, but what's Thank also you. unique about it is that this is the first time Clancy game to take to the air. Um, yeah. What exactly is the overall story that's motivating this? So the game takes place between uh, Ghost Recon 2, I mean, Grow 2, and the beginning of Endwar. Basically, you start as a former US Air Force pilot, member of an elite unit called Hawks. Uh, actually, the first mission of the game, you replay Grow to airstrike mission from the air. You support the ghost on the ground. And after that, you leave the US Air Force to join a powerful private military company that will take you in mission all around the world, like uh, in Africa, Middle East, uh, Afghanistan. And that's the first part of the story, where the tension starts to build until a uh, conflict starts in South America. And the conflict becomes to be so bad that the US decides to step in to stop the conflict and try to disband the PMC and the PMC will not accept that and will turn against the US. And that's where you will decide to switch back to protect your country. And the second part of the campaign will take you into fast-paced action in multiple battles over the US, including major cities. Yeah, fast-paced action is definitely true as we're just seeing here right now. Yeah. One of the very interesting things about this game is the fact that the control of the plane, you've, you've made it so it's accessible to people that really don't do flight games and also very exactly. challenging for those who do. At, do, the core, do at the core of the gameplay, we have a feature we call the assistance. You have assistance on, like we see now, camera behind the plane or in the cockpit, and uh, you can use all the safety from technology, like anti-stall, anti-crash, and you can use also what we call enhanced reality system or ERS, these trajectories are basically uh, your computer computes one to help you intercept your enemy. It anticipates your enemy movements and guide you toward the target. So it's like a complete new way of tracking your target that you never saw before. And that's the assistance on. You can also use it to track an incoming missile and dodge it the same way. Assistance on gives you safety and access to many different uh, gameplay features, but uh, in the same time it limits your uh, capacity of piloting, especially turn angle, speed limit for your safety. And at any moment, just on a double tap on the brake button, you can simply go to assistant off mode, where you'll go into a completely new right here. camera here. You see everything around you. You can still fight the same way, but it's like anti-sliding in a car. When you deactivate it, your car or your plane becomes very, very maneuverable because you have no limits on how much you can turn. Like here is making what we call high alpha angle maneuvers. Basically, they're able to slide in the air, which allows split second direction change and give you incredible maneuverability in dogfight. And you can use that to fight targets on the ground, in the air, everything. And you can also use it to dodge missiles, for example. So here, for example, he's like taking down some uh, landing craft that are attacking the city of Rio. Uh, what we see here on the map is uh, the actual city of Rio de Janeiro. Yes, I, wa I, wa I want to get to this because, well, as I said earlier, this game is amazing looking and like the ground mapping and the, it's so realistic. What is the technology that you're using to actually create a, a very realistic looking world? Well, actually, we're using uh, high quality satellite data. Uh, it's almost uh, military quality we receive from a brilliant provider called GeoEye. It gives us a resolution of uh, 2 meters per pixel, it's really amazing. And uh, it totally recreates the real environment. We're using the real location, Rio de Janeiro, but for example, Cap Canaveral. We have a mission in Cap Canaveral where you protect the space shuttle. And it's the actual 
area that we are showing. So you really battle over the real world, over real locations. And uh, we have maps that are like 100 kilometers per 100 kilometers. So it's really a huge landscape. And uh, we're using many, many different technologies to totally merge the plane in it, like uh, bouncing photons technology to reflect correctly the light on the plane, a different type of uh, depth of field, clouds, uh, volumetric clouds, etc. It's really everything to make the game as uh, immersive and authentic as possible. Which, which, which it definitely is. Now, obviously, we're looking at one level right here. Yeah. But I'm curious, what are the variety of missions that we can expect when we're playing the game? We, in the campaign, you'll have uh, 18 missions uh, featuring all type of modern air combat missions, like uh, suppress enemy air defense, infiltration, escort, closer support. Uh, for example, the Ghost Recon unit, Ghost unit on the ground, you will support them by destroying targets they mark for you. Uh, all type of modern missions, actually. About how many missions can we expect throughout the game? Uh, or, or, or or how many locations? That's my Actually, we have 16 different locations, uh, including uh, half of them in the US. Uh, I can tell you about Cap Canaveral. For the rest, you'll have to wait a bit. But I can tell you, we'll have three major cities in the US. Uh, that should be quite impressive for the audience. And, and obviously, airplanes. That's one of the more exciting aspects of this game. Definitely. How many types of aircraft can you pick? And are you locked to one type of aircraft for a particular mission? We have over 50 different aircraft, uh, from the earliest plane from the 60s to the latest prototypes. Uh, all planes that make modern air combat, jet fighters. So you can have, like here, uh, Suhoi 47, a Euro Russian prototype. Uh, the plane we are flying for now is an F-22 Raptor, the latest uh, interceptor from the US Air Force. But you'll have A-10, all type of uh, French plane, uh, British plane, like Eurofighter, all of them. And quickly, obviously we're not looking at it here, but there is multiplayer and co-op in this game. Definitely. How expansive is that? So we have uh, the campaign that is totally uh, playable in cooperative with four players, with seamless uh, co-op. So you can jump in, jump out and at any time, call your friends to help you in a mission, continue by yourself, it's totally free. And uh, you have also access to team deathmatch, with a team deathmatch of, uh, for example, uh, eight players, two teams of four, um, over all the type of location you have. And, and, and when is the game going to be coming out? The game will be released early 2009 for Xbox 360, PlayStation 3, and PC. Well, Thomas, this is an absolutely amazing looking game, even though it's going to be coming out a little bit later. Thank you so Thanks much for stopping by. I have a little something for you. Oh, you do? Welcome to the Hope Squadron. I now have to buy a jacket. All right, thank you so much, Thomas. Thank you. And back to you guys. later this fall. Now, if you're having fun with cheery, colorful animal pinatas, chances are <laughs> you're probably on Salvia. Well, that's probably you, Kevin. Yeah, yeah. Or you're playing Rare's Viva Pinata games. Or that, yeah. <laughs> right now we're heading, or both, maybe. Is, I recommend them both. Yeah. Um, no, you can't officially recommend that. Yes, I can. Can you? Yeah. While eating a Wendy's burger. We're heading back to the show floor to join Kristen Holt, who's made some new animal friends. You can't eat a burger, you have to hold it in. Oh. Park assistant producer of Viva Pinata Trouble in Paradise. How's it going, Adam? That's great, thanks you. I'm wonderful. Thanks yeah. for talking with us. Okay, so Trouble in Paradise. Who's causing the trouble? It's this guy called Professor Pasta. He was in the original game. He was this kind of nuisance. He was always there, just causing a little bit of trouble. But this time, he's kind of escalated from mischief to more serious things. He's got some ruffians now, like henchmen. He's come in. He's disrupted the paradise. It's up to you to try and sort it out. How many pinatas are in the game? Um, well over 100 now. The original game had about 70 in, so we've upped it to an extra 30 new pinatas, and these are based on environments because you can now travel outside the garden and you can bring back um, Arctic ones, you can bring back desert pinatas. So yeah, so there's a lot of new content in there. That's awesome. Tell me a little bit more about the new environment. Yeah, sure. Um, on the original game, it focused quite heavily on a main garden. It was quite contained. And we really were eager to allow people to explore the island a little more. So, so there's the Pin Arctic, so there you'll find things like penguins. You can also go to the desert desert and you'll find things like geckos. And so it's all themed. You can bring them back, but they're under no obligation to stay. So it's up to you then to try and make them happy. Okay, so how will they then populate the environment? Yeah, sure. So if you kind of brought back a penguin, obviously he would need snow rather than sand. So you lay down some snow, get it nice and icy for him. Hopefully he'd stay. But obviously, if you were to put Sam down, you know, you'd upset him. <laughs> right. And can you share your pinatas? You can, yeah. There's a couple of ways. One way is over live. You can send pinatas to each other using the, the, the live service. More excitingly, though, we've got this thing called Pinata Vision, where you can generate codes, which you can then take out. You can print these out and actually hand kind of physical pinatas that you can then drop in using the live vision camera. I love it. That sounds amazing. Viva Pinata Trouble in Paradise. Thanks, Adam. Thanks a lot. Great. Thanks, Kristen. Viva Pinata Trouble in Paradise will be released this September with new
new pinatas, and a co-op mode. Now we're taking a quick break from the action, but in just a bit, you're getting a lesson in geek mythology <laughs> when we look at a new RPG of Jason's travels in Rise of the Argonauts. And later in the show, we're rolling out onto the RTX battlefield of Endwar, and then we'll suit up to throw some long bombs with Madden 09. Very exciting, guys. Stay tuned. E308 Live is brought to you by Coca-Cola Zero, real Coke taste and zero calories. And by ITT Technical Institute, providing you a place to prepare for your digital future. I am so beautiful. Good to see you again. It's slipping! It's slipping! Oh, stupid tongues. Excuse me, boys, what are you drinking? We're drinking Coke. No, no you're not. It says Coke Zero on the bottle. Do you know why we don't like you, eyeball? Why? Because you are a big, fat liar. <gasps> I am not fat. I'm not. Real Coke taste. Zero calories. Crimes are an unfortunate part of our society. The field of criminal justice is full of men and women, both in the public eye and behind the scenes, working to secure our future. The ITT Technical Institute School of Criminal Justice teaches the fundamentals of the criminal justice system and criminal justice skills. Graduates may be ready to pursue a broad spectrum of careers in the private sector, as well as entry-level positions involving criminal justice, including parole and probation, community corrections and court systems. Be one of the many dedicated Americans who participate in making our nation a better and safer place for us all. ITT Technical Institute School of Criminal Justice, education for the future. To find out more, call 1-800-372-4052 or visit us on the web. Before you go back to school, make sure you see the scariest product placement movie of the summer. Instinct, only from Sprint. Featuring lightning fast internet, starring killer texting, and with special guest voice cued GPS navigation. Find 125 Lick Drive. Turn right two miles. Going back to school? Get the new Samsung Instinct, now playing for just $129.99, only on the Now Network. Visit InstinctThePhone.com. <laughs> I witnessed a murder. Dude! Oh my god, oh my god! I they saw me see them shoot them. What? Did they follow you here? We are gonna hunt these guys now. Dale Soul, we're gonna kill them all. This is so exciting. Whoa, whoa! Come on! No, I think we should stay. Why? So I'm in the dumpster already. From the guys who brought you super bad. Blood life. I can't see! Look, kick out the window, isn't that what they did? Ah. I think I pulled my groin! Get your foot out of there! Oh! Ah. Pineapple Express. We did R. Premium Dell XPS M1530 with Windows Live Photo Gallery. Load, edit, and share your photos. And for a limited time, get a flip video camcorder, all for just $9.99 or finance for less than $2 a day. Go to Dell.com or call now. Dell, yours is here. What if I told you there's a quick and easy way to get today's most popular stuff for free? All you need is internet access. Answer a few questions, then tell us where to send your free gift. It's fast, it's easy, and it's real. Thousands of people have already claimed their free gift. I thought it was too good to be true. Then I got my free Xbox. I got a free Xbox for my son. An offer like this doesn't come around every day. Check out the website now and get your free gift. We are going to be in the game. Wake up, Tromley. You're missing the invasion. How come we can't ever invade a cool country with, like, chicks in bikinis? You gotta see past the different clothes they wear. Hey, these are people in this country. In seven days, Carl Conrad, the coolest geek in the world, will be watching Comic-Con 08 live on G4 with exclusive coverage of Wolverine, Watchmen, Star Trek, Terminator Salvation, and Star Wars, The Clone Wars. Comic-Con 08 live starts next Thursday at 7 only on G4. Wendy's and 
G4 is the only place to get your E3 fix, so stay with us for all the predictions, the rumors, and the details. We have all the latest news on what you want to know about most. What new games will you be pre-ordering this year? And we're getting all the details straight from the game makers. Unfortunately, without waterboarding, because oh, that's so much fun to do. I know. Oh my gosh, they think they're going to die, I and brought they some don't. dish rags and some oh, water. Man. Oh, man. Well. It's totally okay to do it. Time to go back to the floor to grab the news at its source. Here's Chris with Rise of the Argonauts. All right, so I'm in front of the Codemasters booth right here, and every time I walk by, I stop and drool a little bit because I see this game, Rise of the Argonauts, which has all sorts of crazy animal humanoid creatures. I think I saw an elf face in there. But you've actually taken the story of Jason and the Argonauts and allowed it, allowed people to play it as an RPG, which a lot of classical texts really felt like an RPG. So do you want to talk about that? Yeah, I mean, in, in many ways, we, we've really gone out of our way to bring the world of mythological Greece to life. You know, to place the player within a world where the gods are always watching. In fact, as Jason's going throughout the game, every single dialogue choice he even makes throughout the world is actually aligned with the ethos of one of his patron deities, Ares, Hermes, Apollo, or Athena. Right. So like an Ares choice will be aggressive and confrontational, whereas a, a Hermes choice will be more cunning and manipulative. And then based on that choice, your favor with that god will actually increase, which is how Jason will be able to level up throughout the game. Each god is sort of its own class. That's fantastic, and just like the classical text, different gods are going to mess with you, and different gods are going to help you, and you actually get to live inside that world. And you, Charlie Price, the lead designer, uh, do you want to tell us a little bit about the, the combat of the game? Yeah, one of the things we went out of our way to do with combat was we really wanted to make it lethal. You know, we really wanted to capture the sense of, of combat in film rather than just combat in games. Games uh -huh. are the only medium where you can stab a guy in the chest ten times. Right. It's every, funnier when you keep stabbing him, too. Well, you know, every time you hit someone in Rise of the Argonauts, that guy's either going to be crippled, maimed, or killed in a glorious way. What That's, more do you want from a video game, for crap's sake? Exactly. So Jason is a master. He's a weapon master. You can wield the sword, the base, and the spear, and use them all to lethal effect. It's going to be great. I applaud you. Uh, thank you so much, Charlie Price. Rise of the Argonauts coming out fall 2008. Check it out. I'm going to go play right now, so you do something else. Yes, the gods will smile upon you for staying on top of things. Time for an update on the action downtown. Yeah! That's not a euphemism. Oh. Right. Let's get a report from Blair on the floor. We. Oui. I'm here with Gavin Leung, the product manager for Star Wars The Clone Wars. Now, Gavin, it's a pretty big universe. you got a lot of Star Wars stuff to work with. Why do The Clone Wars? So Lucasfilm proper is a company coming with the big entertainment initiatives of The Clone Wars. In the past, the movie's always been about Skywalker, Anakin, both Luke's story. There's so much more to explore. So we're coming out with an animated feature film, a TV show that goes going to be on weekly, as well as games. So the games we're going to have is two dedicated games, one made specific from the ground up for the Wii, the other one specific from the ground for the DS. So the Wii game is going to be Star Wars The Clone Wars Lightsaber Duels. So does name apply, what we're trying to do is replicate all the big, big Star Wars lightsaber moments from the movie and the TV show from the Clone Wars universe and have you experience that at home. So you get to finally wield your remote like a lightsaber, and it's just going to be a lot of fun. We think it's going to be great for all the fans. It's going to be really easy to use because of how intuitive it is. We think it's going to bring in a lot of different gamers that make you really feel anybody can feel like a Jedi. Nice. And on the flip side, you have, we have a Star Wars The Clone Wars a Jedi Alliance that was made specifically on the DS from an internal studio who sits side by side with the animators, bringing you the game into your pocket. The idea is having two Jedi working together, how they strike stronger as one. And we really build it from the ground up for the DS, based on the stylus. So everything, the stylus movement from combat to lightsaber combat and the Jedi movement is all based on the stylus. So nice. those games come on the ho this holiday. Cool. Well, I look forward to seeing it. I'm sure you guys do as well. Back to you. Thanks for that report. Hey! You yeah. yeah! You know what I like? Um, ice cream? Batman! Yes! And tonight we're going behind the scenes of this summer's most anticipated film, The Dark Knight. We've already seen it, it's spectacular. We have saved you a prime spot, <laughs> the red carpet premiere, with interviews from the cast and crew, clips from the film, and much, much more. Check out The Dark Knight at G4 Special Preview tonight at 8 right after E3. Why so serious? Oh, that was good. That was good. No? Yeah. <laughs> I practice it a lot. <laughs> I hate to stop the action, but again, we have to take a break. When we return, though, we're going to look fear in the eye with the horror first-person shooter, Project Origin. And Zach will be knocking around the coach here lounge with some rather large gentlemen talking about the new WWE SmackDown vs. Raw. We'll see if he survives right after this. Why so serious? Lucky and blue! What? E308 Live is brought to you by Wendy's. It's way better than fast food. It's Wendy's. 
Wendy's 99 cent crispy chicken sandwich is made with all white meat. Cause if it's not all white meat, it's a gray area. And I don't like gray areas in my chicken. The 99 cent crispy chicken sandwich, it's way better than fast food. It's Wendy's. The extreme power of Energizer E squared lithium, the world's longest lasting AA battery and high tech devices. Energizer, keep going. Hello. Hey man, what how up? are you? It's yeah, me. Man, Give me a... Just yeah, to say, I spoke good. to mom this morning. Alright, cool. That's no, fine. no, it's basically what you're but, to um, tell me. Yeah, really. zero seconds. Download free ringtones from today's hottest artists only at Motorola.com. The Rocker E8, exclusively at T Mobile. Hello, Moto. Unleash your inner rock star, the Aerosmith way. Guitar Hero Aerosmith, rated T. On July 25th, Mulder, Scully, comes the motion picture event. Tell me what you see. Oh, no. That will make you believe again. Mulder! The X Files, rated PG 13, July 25th, only in theaters. With Gamefly, you can get 5,000 of the hottest new and classic games delivered right to your door. Gamefly.com. Over 5,000 titles. No late fees. Start now for $8.95. Games delivered. Product shown later. Hi, I'm Paul. I'm an insurance customer. I never knew auto insurance could make me feel... <laughs> so animated? With electronic documents and automatic renewal, eSurance makes it easy to take care of my auto insurance, so I don't have to think about it. Um, because there's no paperwork, eSurance customers have saved thousands of trees. And you've also helped plant over 20,000 more. I can really save some green with eSurance. Now that's something to get animated about. Take a fresh look at your auto insurance. Get your quote from eSurance today. And here we go. Get inside the most anticipated film this year. The Dark Knight, a G4 special preview, tonight at 8, after E3. When it comes to going bald, you now have a choice. Advances in medical science have resulted in the world's first and only permanent solution to hair loss. It is your real hair. It's your natural hair. You wash it, you cut it, you swim with it. Bosley is the world's most experienced hair restoration experts, having pioneered virtually every major advancement in the art and science of hair restoration. I'm very, uh, very satisfied, very happy with what I've done. This has got to be one of the best decisions I've made in my life, I'll tell you that. Bosley Hair Restoration is a relatively simple outpatient procedure. The results look completely natural, and it's affordable on nearly any budget. Call the toll-free number now to receive your free, no-obligation information kit that will help you decide if hair restoration at Bosley is right for you. You don't have to accept going bald. Do something about it right now. Call 1-800-457-3615. That's 1-800-457-3615. Call now. If you're not watching Code Monkeys, then you're missing out. Give me the best boob job 200 bucks can buy on the best 8-bit animated series in history. Quick, help me put them in my mouth. Code Monkey Season 2. I'm home. Where's my dinner, bitch? Ow! All new episodes Sunday night at 10, part of G4 Stay Out of the Sun Summer. I remember a couple years back that everybody was saying E3 is going to die out and go away. Based upon what you've guys seen this year, is it going away? Or do you guys foresee E3 being around for a long time? That's a really good question because when I started, it was so massive and so huge. Right. And you made a great comment that you now this time, and then it was last year it was in a hangar, mm -hmm. uh, an airport hangar, and now it's like in a very large hallway. Um, and our coverage yeah. is getting bigger. Next year, and E3 it's is getting at the Motel smaller. Six poolside, though. But uh, but, but I think that no matter what, is that you know games are so, are going to be coming out. It's still a really big topic. We love them. We are going to be covering it. So E3 or not, G4 will have some sort of hands-on demo and releases of the games. Yeah, so it doesn't matter E3. how big the convention hall is square footage-wise. Yeah. What matters is that the companies have games to show off. So yeah. will E3 be at the same time or in the same place next year? Who knows? Mm -hmm. But uh, I don't think it's dying anytime soon because the industry has a lot to share. Yeah, and so either way, E3 might not be there, but we, G4, will be mm. there covering it. Mm. Same story.
We will press on. <laughs> so this year, E3 is here. So we are E3 OA Live right now, presented by Wendy's. And G4 is the only place to get this kind of in-depth coverage on the entire gaming world. That's right. Today, we still have new hands-on demos and exclusives of the upcoming games that you'll be playing in the weeks and the months to come. So if you're addicted to horror and you need yet another fix, we have a brand new game that you're going to fall in love with. You can slow down time again and scare the crap into your pants with Project Origin. Yeah, think about what I just said. Adam is back at the show and wading into the horror. In this direct sequel to Monolith's Fear, Project Origin will thrust you into the shoes of a Delta Force operative, encountering some of the most unsettling imagery you'll ever see in a video game. The game features new locations, bigger maps, more weapons, and enough action and suspense to keep you awake at night. Joining us now is John Mulkey, the lead designer of Project Origin. Thanks so much for joining us and bringing this amazing, this is a good looking game, but we, only, we expect that from Monolith. Well, thank you, you very guys much. have that technology. Um, now, for people who may not have figured it out, this is the follow up to Fear. This is absolutely the sequel to Fear. Um, Monolith made the first game, Monolith's making the second game. Now, uh, where does this come in terms of the storyline after Fear has ended? Basically, the story takes up about 20 minutes or so before the end of the first game. So it ramps in really nicely. There's a different protagonist in this game. You play Michael Beckett. He's a part of a military team. He's going in after a Genevieve Aristide. She's the president of Armacam Technology. She's the one that kind of started everything in motion in the first game. She was the one that opened the vault, awakened Alma, kind of set everything to falling apart. Um, so you're going after her because they're uncovering all of these things in the first towards the, first, the end of the first game. You're going after her for answers. You don't know what's going on. Get a hold of her, find out what we're going up against. You go in to try to extract her, take her into protective custody. You come to find that there's some, some others that are sent in to take care of her in a different way. Uh, you're fighting your way through that, trying to get to her. And in the midst of that, the explosion from the first game happens, throws everything into absolute chaos. And you go from there trying to figure out what's going on, what to do, how to resolve the situation. In terms of things being thrown into chaos, and we can see that right here, the city yes. is functionally destroyed. The city's in ruin. Almageddon. We're calling it Almageddon. Almageddon. I like that. <laughs> so does that mean Alma's back? Uh, yes, absolutely. And is Alma going to be a little girl? Might she See, manifest? That's the thing. This, this game, the first game you dealt with Alma as the child, the child aspect of her personality. This game you're going to be dealing with the woman. You're going to be dealing with the woman. She has different needs. She has different desires. The interaction with her is going to be much more personal, intimate. Uh, she's going to touch you more, which is creepy on all new levels. I'm just glad it's not the insolent teen version of Alma, because that could be almost too scary for words. <laughs> now, um, uh, now with, with this destroyed city, it looks like we're going to see uh, a wider variety of environments inside of Fear. Where, where are we going to be playing in? Um, that was a very conscious effort that we made early in production, is to make sure that we're going to a lot of different environments, a lot of variety. It's one of the things that we kind of felt as a team that we didn't quite accomplish as well as we would like to on the first game. So we're going to be going, you're going to be going to a lot of an outdoor environments, a lot larger environments, a lot more varied environments in this game. Now, one of the key elements of fear was the fact that you could slow down time, which was essential given the uh, yes. challenge that the AI presented for you. I assume that's still in the game. Are there other powers? Are there other weapons? What's the new stuff? Well, as far as the, the, the idea of power, the idea of the slow-mo is a representation of an intense focus. So it's not so much that true, he has a true, power, yes. and, it, and that's enhanced by genetic manipulation and chemical, chemical manipulation. Um, the character in this game that you play is not, a, spoiler alert, a progeny of Alma, as the, as the character was in the first game, um, but he's always been kind of the best of the best. He has that power. He doesn't understand why. You come to find out over the course of the game. We wanted to avoid going with powers, per se, because it becomes kind of like spells and a little bit more magical. We wanted to keep it a little bit more grounded in science. Now, obviously, the other thing about fear, scary game. Yeah. It should be, obviously, with a name like that. What is the trick to maintain, maintain tension in a game that's about, you know, five times longer than, say, a horror movie? The idea, we, we use something we call palate cleansers. It's the idea that, you know, you're, anything that you do for a long period of time is going to become, it's going to wear on you, you know? So you have to kind of switch it up, change up the experience, and we really do that a lot. You know, you'll go through a really intense combat scene, maybe knock it down a little bit into some exploration and a little bit of problem solving, then ratchet up the tension a little bit, maybe punch you in the head with a scare moment, you know, it, and just really vary it up because you have to keep it fresh as you're going through, and I think that's key. You know what, speaking of fresh, uh, it sounds like you guys brought a little special something just for us that we're going to take a look at. We did. We have a character that we wanted to show you. All right, let's take a look at this. Uh, but, you know, as we cut to the video, let me know what, what, what are we looking at. Um, this is a character that we, we brought to the game. Um, the, 
<laughs> when Alma, when Alma, there we go. Yeah, there we go. That's the video there. When uh, when Alma was released, the explosion that that, that, that uh, decimated the city, it basically vaporized almost everybody in the city. But there was a few that weren't destroyed. They were actually changed. And these characters are sort of a shell, a remnant of their former selves. And you'll come upon them doing really creepy um, playing out of little snippets of their life. When they're agitated, they have this scream attack, which which basically raises any dead around them, um, and it's kind of a puppet master kind of relationship. Those things will now do its bidding and, and attack you. You can take them down, but he'll raise them right back up. And so the key is to destroy the puppet master himself in order to take down the enemies. So really, we're, I mean, we almost have like it's sort of like a, 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 a meta zombie or something. Yeah, like that. it's a really creepy kind of a marionette it, it, kind it of thing. Definitely, marionettes is. with guns, you know, that kind of thing. So it's a little. Just, yeah, just, just, just that there is very unnerving. This is really cool. About where in the game do you think we might start encountering them, or can you tell me? They're kind of spread throughout. You know, once you start really trying to understand what happened in the city, what, what the repercussions of Alma's release are, you'll start running into these kind of elements. And actually, let's go back to the game now, because now we're in a mech suit. Yeah, we've introduced a powered armor that the player can pilot in the game, which is just awesome. You get this sense of power. You've got dual miniguns, you know, on the arms. You've got two uh, pod, shoulder pod missile launchers. Um, and it's it's really coming together. Like right now, you're seeing a, the streaking in uh, like a comet. What that is is it's these smaller powered armors being uh, thrown into the, the combat environment. Wow. So I think one thing we really can take from this is that we're going to see a lot more variety absolutely, in the gameplay absolutely. in Project Origin. Of the stuff we've seen, there's even more stuff that we can expect out of it? Oh, yes, absolutely. That was the banner from the beginning. It was variety. That, that's the best thing that describes what separates Fear and Project Origin. It's really concentrated variety. All right, let's, let's get to a couple of the, uh, the, the, the business questions. Multiplayer. Multiplayer we can't talk about yet. Okay. We will have it. Okay, there will be multiplayer. Well, yes, that's, we will. That's, that's, that's good enough to no, know. And uh, hey, when are we going to get a chance to be playing this? Uh, I'm, I'm now very tempted. The ship date is another thing I can't talk about. We're going to be talking about that after E3 and, and, and setting it up. But we know there is multiplayer, and we know it will ship. Exactly. Those are two very good Those things like, to know. You know, first, big news. Um, actually, you know, we have a little bit more time, so I'm just going to throw one more question sure. at you. Um, Pretty much the sound of the game. I mean, that's also central to yeah. a horror game. Um, yeah. What have you learned from the first one that you're applying to this to you know ratchet up that fear? We're doing some stuff. Uh, Brian Pamantuan, he's our, our sound guy. He's been doing some great things with basically a uh, dynamic scoring system that he's come up with to, to, to work in the game. So if you can imagine sort of a, a film score playing in the background of the game silently at all times, when things happen in the action, be it combat, scares, whatever, it'll bring to the forefront aspects of that soundtrack. So because our game is completely, uh, it, it, it plays out different every time, it, you're basically dynamically scoring it sort of in a cinematic way as you play the game. And it's really, really cool. Yes, it is. Uh, John, everything you've shown us today, especially our special reveal of the new enemy, <laughs> is really, really cool. All right. I wish you the best on the game. Hey, thanks Can't a lot. Wait to play it. All right, let's send it back over to Kevin and Olivia. Looks awesome. Oh, yeah. Now, Bioshock taught gamers that little girls are creepy fun. And Project Origin keeps the good times rolling when it debuts this Halloween. Let's have a look at the results of today's X poll. Now, earlier we asked you, what do you think of Mirror's Edge? And it turns out that the majority of you are describing the game as looking gorgeous rather than looking scary. And I'm glad we settled that because I agree. Yeah, I agree as well. But yeah. I'm, I'm excited for the first person gameplay. I think that's going to be a lot of fun. Little first person parkour? <laughs> Why not? Are you? Do you parkour in, in your real life? No, like but at, I bet you could. At the Y, I do in the <laughs> locker room inappropriately <laughs> when guys need, are changing and blow drying their taint. Well, you're gonna have to do it. At <laughs> That's the worst. The old guy with one leg. You know. Anyway, there's still much more show to come. If Morgan and Adam were here, this would be a classy program. It is right still now. classy. It's the Y. We're heading so into battle with Tom Clancy's first RTS game, End War. Then we're heading into a different kind of fight with Banjo Kazooie, Nuts and Bolts. Don't forget, it's almost time for some Madden 09. That's one of my favorite games. I love Madden. It's coming up soon, so don't go anywhere. Remember to keep your iPods there with the latest E308 videos. Just download GeForce Special E3 Podcast to check out the X Play feed at g4tv.com slash podcast. We'll I need the right Con here. Don't go anywhere. I need the Con Air. Fans and critics agree, Attack of the Show is time well wasted. Testify! One of the coolest shows on TV, Attack of the Show, weeknights at 7 and 10, only on G4. When you're Hendrick Motorsports, every race is a battle fought with Q Motor Oil technology. Get the Q horsepower specially designed for your car. Unleash all your horses. 
General Jack O'Neill is back with the SG-1 team as they face their greatest battle on Earth. Here they come! Move! Stargate Continuum on DVD and Blu-ray High Def July 29th. Now more than ever, you want to get the most for your money. Look no further than the 2008 mid-size Kia Optima. 31 MPG, 5-star safety rated, backed by an industry-leading warranty, and it's priced about $3,000 less than a Toyota Camry SE. Or to put it another way, three years worth of electric bills less. The Kia model year-end event. It's money well saved. Now get 0% APR or up to 3,000 cash back on the 2008 Optima. Your teeth are a living part of your body. And over time, the enamel begins to weaken from the inside. But now you can help rebuild your teeth. New Trident Extra Care, the only gum with Recaldin, a unique form of calcium that penetrates into and strengthens tooth enamel. Trident Extra Care, chew strong. So I guess this is hello. 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 It's time to say goodbye to goodbye. How are you? Hi. It's time to stop worrying about how long you talk from home. Say hello, Dr. Volcatron. T-Mobile introduces a revolutionary home phone service. After 17 seasons, it's time for me to say hello. T-Mobile at home, just $10 a month. Say goodbye to goodbye. I faced one of the toughest challenges of my life right here. I couldn't swim, but I can still hear my drill instructor today. Don't quit. So I jumped in. Apprehensive and scared out of my mind. But I came up a Marine. The few, the proud, the Marines. Benzene, arsenic, cyanide, so many poisons in cigarette smoke. It's like these tobacco companies hate us or something. Maybe we got it all wrong. Maybe they love us. It's just like tough love. Tough love's the best love of all the love there is. That's what we get from the big tobacco biz. Their products may maim us and leave us for dead, but it's just love, tough love, so get it through your head. Wait, that makes no sense. You're familiar with the death race. The drivers are convicts and the rules are simple. It's kill. Or be killed. I can see the appeal. Win and get your freedom. Let's play a little offense. <laughs> You're out in front. Who are you going to shoot at? Hold tight. I love this game. You can burn me, you can shoot me, but you can't kill me! Rid it all starts August 22nd. Tech savvy, the nerd, the nasty, hack three, hack G4, ride a chip to man, this nerd core scoring free plays in the arcade and beyond. Plus, I got so many gadgets, I'm the nerdy James Bond. Thought about sharing, I'm the telegarden renegade, sharing freaking text, baby, hacking phones and getting paid. Mess with me and feel the wrath of a non con. We got that rule 34 on your mind, so watch your girl, it's a nerd's world. Damn, tech, aren't nearly enough to do everything that needs to be done at E3. Yes, but we're going to do our best to show you as much as we can before the show is over. Right now, let's find out what's happening in the world. Here's Allison Hayslip with the only news you need to know. Thanks, guys. Here are your top stories. There's a lot of excitement in the air surrounding E3, but the biggest news out of E3 may be the announcement that didn't happen. Where was Master Chief? The Microsoft press conference was a Cortana-free zone, despite the fact that Halo Wars is due out in 2009. Bungie Studios, the creators behind the Halo franchise, split from Microsoft this year, and even though they are consulting on the Halo titles, there's still some disagreements between the two companies. That led to the Halo announcement being cut at the last minute from the press conference. And as for Bungie, they were set to reveal their first game since splitting from Microsoft, but Microsoft put the kibosh on the announcement, and so it never happened. Here's a word of advice for any of our viewers who happen to be running a major metropolitan city. Don't let your IT guy be the only person with the network password. 
Right now, San Francisco is learning this the hard way. A disgruntled city technology employee somehow gained sole access to the higher level functions of the city's fiber optic network, which handles government business from emails to court records. The employee is currently being held on $5 million bail after refusing to open the network again. Authorities have also still not located his missing red swing line stapler. But here's an announcement that did happen. YouTube has partnered up with TiVo to bring you all the crotch kicking videos you can stand to your real TV set. Starting today, TiVo will offer subscribers the ability to stream YouTube videos to their television sets using broadband enabled TiVo boxes. You won't be able to store YouTube videos on the box, it's only serving as a window, but you'll be able to bookmark things to watch again. Well that's it for today, but don't worry, the feed doesn't stop here. Get all the news you need to know anytime at G4TV.com. I'm Allison Hayslip and you've just been fed. Thanks, Allison. It's time now to head over to the Coke Zero Lounge, where it looks like Zach has made some new friends. He has. Hey, I'm hanging out at the G4 Coke Zero Gamers Lounge with none other than the WWE Tag Team Champions himself, The Miz and John Morrison. They're here to promote GQ's right. latest brawler, the old SmackDown vs. Raw 2009. Gentlemen, nice to see you. Great Good to be here with the Zach. Yeah, absolutely. First and foremost, you've been champions for eight months. You've had these belts on your shoulders. They're heavy, but with calm titles. And they're titles. not because yeah, you belts. wear a belt they're here. This okay. is a title. That, that's a belt. That's a title. You win this. These are you wear that. Did you did you beat anybody for that belt? Got this at an antique store. You kicked ass for that. There you go. Totally understood. What's it like to be on top of the world right now? Well, I don't mean to brag about it. When chicks are waiting outside your hotel room, you know, doing whatever you want, whenever you want. It's not a bad life. And it's not a bad life to have yourself created in a video game as well, especially you know when you guys are tag team partners here. Uh, you know, Let's talk about the tag team interface on this game. What are we going to see in this version that we haven't seen before? They've had tag team wrestling in the previous versions of SmackDown vs. Raw, but this version's got a whole different module, a whole different mode of the tag team wrestling. You can do tag team maneuvers, there's a hot tag, all sorts of different things that haven't been available before in SmackDown vs. Raw. Basically puts you in the whole atmosphere of being in the real live ring because we have to have to work together in order to keep these titles. So, in the ring, in this ring, you're going to have to do the same. You can work together. So exactly. Closer play. and closer to reality is what we're going for. Okay, so there's actually co-op play. There's also use of like your AI character on the side here. You can have you know more of your personality interjected into it to distract the reps or get the fans involved. Which well, is Zach, I don't know how you could put this personality into a game because, I mean, I am so amazing and ridiculously good looking. A lot but of geeks. They did an amazing job on it, I have to say. Nice. I mean, I don't mean to brag about it, but <laughs> he's I'm obviously, really, really good looking. He's played the game, the game a lot, and uh, he loves to play with himself. Excellent. Well, speaking of playing with yourself, let's talk about your signature moves. I said it. You know, what kind of signature moves of yours <laughs> made it in the game? Any of them? Come well, all of them. I have, all uh, of the, I have the Wizard moves. of Oz in the reality check. Nice. John Morrison has the Moonlight, the Moonlight drive. drive is in the game, as well as the snapshot. Pretty much anything and everything that you could ever hope for. But the cool part is you can actually make up your own finishing moves, as well as your own entrances. So I was actually playing the game and trying to figure out new moves that I could use in reality, because they actually have cooler things that your own I could do. So you can choose your own like theme music, you walk on in and you just destroy. And exactly. you can make up finishing moves. You can put up to like 10 moves together in a big finishing move combination. A beautiful. grand finale, if you will. It's a beautiful thing. Speaking of grand like finale, <laughs> SmackDown versus Raw 2009 from THQ. It's awesome. Morrison Miss, Catch Him Sunday, Great American Bash on pay-per-view. Back to you. Oh. We're going to need you later in the show, so stay alive, Zach, please, and keep practicing <laughs> your finishing moves. It's all about the finishing moves. And here's some more good advice. Stay out of the sun this summer. Oh, Sit with a, G4. Really, that's a gem of advice. It there. is, right? Because no one likes looking tan and healthy. For Comic-Con 08 Live, we're taking you inside San Diego's massive pop culture phenomenon with an unprecedented six hours of live coverage. No one else gives you this kind of inside access to all the comics, movies, and stars. Like who, Olivia? Well, let me just tell you, if you just shut up. Oh. Samuel L. Jackson, Jamie, Ke Jamie King, Guy Ritchie, Kevin Pereira. Yeah! 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 yeah. Maybe some Keanu oh, Reeves if we're lucky. Commercial. Don't miss G4's Colossal Live Comic Con 08 coverage starting next Thursday night at 7. Check out g4tv.com slash Comic Con for info and updates. Again, it's time for a break, everybody. So I'm going to start running. So but we're coming running. right back. Yeah, get ahead, start. With the explosive action of N War and a colorful world of Banjo Kazooie Nuts and Bolts. And later, Adam and Morgan will be sacking each other in Madden 09 to Brown. E308 Live is brought to you by Wendy's. It's way better than fast food. It's Wendy's. And by Comic-Con 08 Live. Comics, movies, and stars. Starts next Thursday night at 7, only on G4. 
Wendy's 99 cent crispy chicken sandwich is made with all white meat. Because if it's not all white meat, it's a gray area. And I don't like gray areas in my chicken. The 99 cent crispy chicken sandwich, it's way better than fast food. It's Wendy's. You're thinking steak. Your car informs you to avoid the next exit. And that you'll have fresh powder in Aspen tomorrow. And for steak, your car recommends the filet at Boulevard. The highly intelligent, redesigned Acura RL with technology package. Luxury in its most advanced state. Acura Advance. On August 1st. Good going, Dad. You raised another mummy. Brendan Fraser. Jet Li. Hey, mummies! They never play fair! The Mummy, Tomb of the Dragon Emperor, rated PG-13, starts August 1st. Sometimes you need a little push to let go of your Mach 3 Razor until you discover Gillette Fusion. Five blades based closer together with less irritation. Switch to Gillette Fusion. Unleash your inner rock star. Guitar Hero on tour. Rated everyone 10 and up. Go for the rock! What are you doing? Somebody left these new Starburst gummy bursts in here. They have this juicy burst inside. Watch this. We have to get in there. Hey, Chad's phone. Chad doesn't have AT&T, oh which my. means no bars here in Spain. So, I guess we won't be getting your call warning us about the local beaches. Awesome. Hey, hey, it's not now, some are more naked than others. Why is everybody naked? <laughs> For the best coverage, switch to AT&T. More bars in more places. For a limited time, get our exclusive LG Shine for only $49.99. I mean, sure. I help people save money on car insurance, but few folks know that I support wildlife conservation too. You gonna eat all those? Well, you are, aren't you? You're just gonna go to town. All right, well, I'll make this quick. I'm teaming up with the Association of Zoos and Aquariums. I'm gonna be making the rounds to get the word out. Are those clams? I love clams. Do you uh, want to offer me any? Uh, apparently not. Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. I really got sick and tired of every day when I met somebody. They would look at the top of my head, and then they'd look me in the face. I think my hair looks better now than it did when I was in my 20s. Hey, some people are beautiful, bald, but it wasn't for me. I feel great about myself now. I look the way I think I'm supposed to look. It was like a dream come true for me because I wanted my own hair back. The Bosley treatments absolutely exceeded my expectations, no question about it. This is all me, so I'm thrilled. I finally enjoy getting a haircut. Now that I see the results, I wish I would have done it four or five years sooner. I'm really excited about having uh, my hair back. When it comes to going bald, you now have a choice. To find out more about this clinically proven permanent hair loss solution from Bosley, call to receive this free guidebook, Medical Report and DVD. This is the only permanent solution to hair loss. Choose to do something about your hair loss. Call 1-800-986-3625. That's 1-800-986-3625 or go online to bosley.com today. In seven days, Carl Conrad, the coolest geek in the world, will be watching Comic-Con 08 live on G4 with exclusive coverage of Wolverine, Watchmen, Star Trek, Terminator Salvation, and Star Wars, The Clone Wars. Comic-Con 08 live starts next Thursday at 7 only on G4. Presented by Wendy's, we still got tons of games and more reports from the floor. Woo. Plus, Plus, you can look forward to some hands-on yeah. demos and face-to-face -face action. In this hour, we'll check out Madden 09. We'll see how this year's big yeah. football game differs uh, from the others and what you can look forward to on the field. 
Then Tom Clancy returns to battle with Enwar. We'll take you inside the Ubisoft game that takes place during World War III, which, by the way, according to the game, takes place in 2011. Plus, hold on to your hats if you're wearing one because we'll look at the long-awaited Spore. Morgan will go hands-on with a mythical game that's already a legend. Let's get right into it. Not only are Tom Clancy games taking to the skies with Hawks, but they're also exploring the combat zone RTS style with End War. Here's Morgan to tell us so much more. Tom Clancy's End War doesn't just put you in the middle of the battle, it puts you in charge of World War III. In this non-traditional real-time strategy game, players can use innovative voice commands to order troops on the battlefield without even having to use the controller. Besides the single-player story, you can also wage war online in an ever-changing battlefield. Russia, Europe, and the U.S. are set to fight, and it's up to you to decide the fate of the world. Tom Clancy's End War is creative director Michael DePlatter and editorial content director Julian Garrity. Welcome. Now you're Julian. We have Michael over there. He's actually playing the game because the um, the game has a little uh, interesting too. command scheme. Can we talk about that a little bit? Well, one thing that everybody talks about when they talk about End War is that it's entirely voice command controllable. So just like a real general, you'll be barking out orders and your troops will follow exactly what you're saying. And then do you see the skeptical look on my face? Yes, I know. <laughs> we get that a lot. We I get bet you people do. going from, I'll believe it when I see it, to right. I'll believe it when I try it. And then when they try it, they're convinced. Now, we've seen a lot of RTSs on consoles lately. Uh, the control schemes haven't 100% worked. Uh, how are you guys addressing that? Well, previous games, previous RTS games on console have always been uh, ports from PC, great PC games. But the PC games are based on a keyboard and mouse uh, control scheme. That simply doesn't work when you're talking about a living room experience with a controller. So we really thought about it and built the game ground up for a controller experience and for that living room experience. So of course you're bound to make changes. First change we made was of course the controls. The camera came afterwards, but the controls were very important to streamline. So you're going uh, to control everything just with two or three buttons, and it's a very similar control scheme to a tactical shooter, to an FPS, and everybody's played one of those. So how do the voice commands come in? I, I want to hear some of the uh, voice commands that he's giving. So here's Michael zapping unit from two, his units Sierra. to his units so on the battlefield. He's scrolling between uh, viewpoints unit from six, the different units that he has Absolutely. scattered across the battlefield. Yeah. So if he wants to look at a different point of the battlefield where he has a unit position, he can just scroll That's the camera right. with the analog stick over to the camera unit position five, from that unit. Or nine. simply say, unit two camera, and he'll zap right to it. So if he says unit two camera, unit five camera, then the camera is automatically going to refocus on that unit. That's right. Okay, so then what other commands does he have uh, to control the unit? Attack, move to anywhere on the battlefield, attack any enemy, any building, everything's destructible. Everything is controllable with your voice. So can you identify a certain building with your voice or do you have to target it with the cursor with the analog stick? You target it just like a first person shooter okay. with the camera. You point the cursor at it, Unit attack camera. target. Okay, I want to take I want to take a little, little listen to some of the commands he's using. I mean, how, how did you get the voice engine to recognize people's commands and people's voices? It's actually, when you start off a game, you have to design it around all the actions in the game. So we decided two, on Sierra, a certain number support. of actions that covered everything that we wanted Unit to do. Five, and then we refined every single word in terms of the voice recognition, so we have upwards of 95% recognition rate. I mean, were you scared doing a voice recognition title? It seems. The user would be incredibly frustrated if it didn't, if it missed, you know, one out of a hundred commands. Absolutely. Uh, when we when we show it to the head office, their major concern is people have to use this perfectly. It's just like if you're playing Guitar Hero and you, it, it didn't work. If the guitar was faulty, you'd never touch it again. Right. So this has to be perfect, and that's what we're aiming for. So let's talk uh, a little bit about the multiplayer options. Yes. Okay. So <laughs> of course, real-time strategy game. Right. Multiplayer is a big, big part of yeah. it. So. The game's split into three. You've got the single-player story campaign, where you play the uh, missions leading up to World War III, and then uh, the denouement of World War III, if you will. Then you've got the uh, death match mode, which is a 20-minute gameplay blast. It's like a skirmish. That's right, okay. the skirmish mode. Right. And then you have the theater of war. 
Now, the theater of war is the persistent world that we've built for this. The persistent world where you choose a faction, Russia, uh, Europe, or the States, and you fight alongside all of the other commanders in that faction for the domination of the world. And you, and you can, you can uh, you know, come into this game at any time. Absolutely. Come into this game at any time, choose your commander, choose your specialty. Let's say you're going to be a tank specialist or a gunship specialist. Upgrade those units, gaining experience and money from different battles, and use those uh, units to battle alongside other commanders. So not only is it uh, multiplayer, but it's also cooperative. So for example, Mike is playing with an a another AI commander cooperatively against two AI commanders as well on the map. You know, what right, what platforms is this going to be available on? So this is coming out on PS3, uh, Xbox 360, DS and, and PSP with possibly a PC version in October. So you've got everybody covered. Absolutely. Well, this is a huge undertaking, very ambitious. We wish you all the best of luck. I cannot wait to play. Thank you so much for coming by, you guys. Thank you. Let's send it back over to the studio. Thank you for showing us what makes End War tick. I'm curious to see how voice command works with everybody's griefing each other, you know, on Xbox Live. But in the meantime, there's a new Banjo-Kazooie game making its way to the Xbox 360, and Olivia has an exclusive look for you. This year, Rare is back with sequels for two of its most loved franchises. After being in hibernation since the N64 days, Banjo-Kazooie is back with Nuts and Bolts, a vehicle-based platformer where you customize your vehicle with over 1,600 parts. Everyone's favorite exploding animals are set to return in Viva Pinata, Trouble in Paradise. This time, there's full drop-in, drop-out co-op play and around 100 pinatas to track down. Now you just have to find a place to put all this stuff. Joining us for this hands-on exclusive creative director from Microsoft Game Studios, Mr. Ken Lobb, thank you so much for dropping by and bringing us Banjo-Kazooie Nuts and Bolts. Now, I want to, um, you're going to be playing while I ask you some questions, but I know it's been a, a while since the last Banjo title came out. Now, what's it been up to? Where does this pick up from the last time? So, Banjo-Kazooie Nuts and Bolts takes place 10 years after the original Banjo-Kazooie mm -hmm. game. The idea now, though, is that you come at the beginning of the game, and your evil nemesis is a witch named Grunty. In the original two games, you fought against Grunty. She was the big bad boss. She kind of set up the whole idea of where you were going and what you were doing. This game, you've been sitting around lazy for a while and <laughs> falling over, no problem. Let me get going back and then I'll tell you. There you go. So beginning of the game, you're kind of chubby and lazy. Your character decides that he's going to go after Grunty one more time. So you're getting ready to have a big fight. And along comes this big character named Log. He's Today the Lord of Games. Of and he's Lord the new, of the new character. He's the he's new the big good. boss. Yeah. So this character has designed of every everything. game ever made. Of course it's At least that's what he claims. Uh -huh. And so he's decided that he's sick of watching Banjo and Grunty always fighting with each other. So what he's going to do is he's going to set you into his world where you and Grunty get to fight it out once and for all to determine who is the overall ruler of Spiral Mountain. I know that this has uh, changed things quite a bit since the 64 platformer came out. So I want to ask you about the control scheme. What's that like? Okay, so uh, just on the gameplay in general, it's pretty much the same as it's always been. Interestingly, what Rare decided to do when they started the game was, mm -hmm. you know, how can we build a platformer that encompasses the power of the next generation system? I mean, you can see the world that I'm flying around is absolutely massive. Yeah. If you go back into time to the N64, when you played the original Banjo game, the worlds were big for the time, but realistically they were small enough so that you could traverse them as an individual character. With this game, what they found was the worlds they create, could create were so big that they needed to come up with a way to get your character to move through the world more quickly. So what they did was they started this idea of, hey, what if Banjo was driving a bunch of vehicles around? That makes sense, because you know, I was talking to Adam Sessler earlier, who, by the way, said this is one of his most favorite games of all time, and he was really excited about how massive the environments and worlds really are. And as you can see, we started off and there was these vehicles, and Nuts and Bolts actually lets you customize your own vehicles, and Adam was talking about how excited he was about that as well. So how many vehicles can we make in this game? So exactly. virtually infinite amount of vehicles. You have over a thousand different parts that you collect mm -hmm. during the game. That's the kind of collectability aspect. So just to jump on that for half a second, one of the things that uh, Banjo fans from the past remember is that Banjo was one of the first true collect-a-thon games where mm -hmm. the goal is the game is to move through the world and collect stuff. Yeah. This game they decided, why don't we, what if we take and make collection something that really builds on the overall player's experience? So by making the parts, the things that you yeah. collect, 
Now I can take all these parts and I can literally build the moves for my character. You know, yes, there are some games out there where you can level design, mm -hmm. and level design is a cool way to be yeah, creative. Yeah, definitely. This game, they, they took that another direction, though, and said, well, what if you could move design? Yeah. You know, what if instead of unlocking moves for the bird in your backpack, which mm -hmm. was the original Banjo-Kazooie, what if you could unlock new moves for your character? And to do that in the form of parts. So you move through the game, you collect all these parts, and then using the parts, you put them together and you build all kinds of crazy vehicles that you use to play the various challenges in the game. So in this case, I went over and I talked to Mumbo. He wants me to do something. He wants me to go run this little um, obstacle course. So you go and create a vehicle for so, that? So he gives you, there's default vehicles for every, oh, if I can drive and talk at the same time. <laughs> Excuse me, viewers. Um, well, so there's a he default gives vehicle. You, yeah, he gives yeah. you a vehicle. He gives you a default vehicle for every one of the challenges in the game. And then what you find, though, as you play through it is, well, heck, this vehicle's good, but I can make it go faster maybe by or throwing maybe on some jump. rockets, or I can make it jump higher. So this vehicle already jumps. What if I can make it jump higher by adding a few more spring springs, uh -huh. or I can make it go faster by putting a bigger engine on? This allows the users to take user uh, creativity into the idea of a platform game. Now, I want to ask you about, which is really big for games nowadays, is uh, will the game feature co-op or multiplayer? Mode? Yeah, so we're obviously big fans of multiplayer at yeah. uh, Microsoft. Most of the games that we work on are either versus co-op multiplayer, mm -hmm. some form of thing you can do over live with your friends. So in Banjo, they've come up with an interesting idea. You don't co-op through the whole quest, but many of the challenges that are available in the game can be played multiplayer with your friends in a uh, either a cooperative or a competitive mode, mm -hmm. so you can go up against your friends, or you can go on uh, some of the other modes you have. I'm sitting in the water here, obviously. <laughs> other forms of races, other forms of challenges, like you can get together with five friends and play five-a-side soccer with vehicles. Mm -hmm. There's um, loop chases, there's collection quests that you can do, again, either competitively or cooperatively. Well, that's what's so great about it. There's, there's so many different worlds and environments and so many different, obviously an infinite amount of vehicles that you can create and so much you can do with this. But I just want to thank you so much for dropping by and giving us this exclusive look at the new Banjo-Kazooie. Now, when can we expect this game to hit store shelves? This game is coming out this fall. Now, am I, am I correct in saying that uh, the original comes out on Xbox Live soon? Yes, very good. Thank you for when catching that. When does that come that. out? Yeah, so we're shipping the Xbox Live uh, version of the original Banjo-Kazooie within the launch window. So awesome. sometime right around when we ship the game. All right, so you guys can get both at the same time. We cannot wait, but right now we're going to head back over to Kevin. Thanks, Mon. Banjo-Kazooie Nuts and Bolts is on its way to a 360 near you very soon. Now, here's an next poll, everybody, so make your opinion count. The big question is, who won E3? Is it Microsoft, Sony, or Nintendo? Just head on over to g4tv.com slash E3 to vote, or you can text E3 to 44898. And we'll total up your responses and bring you the results later on in the show. All right, everybody, time to pay some bills, but once we're done, we'll be back with a look at some football action with Madden 09. After that, gaming evolves into Spore. We're going to put the organism creation game under the old microscope. Watch the best of our E3 OA coverage whenever you want. Look for G4 TV on demand on my channel lineup and check out G4TV.com slash VOD for more info. I'm going to look on your lineup. <laughs> E308 Live is brought to you by Coca-Cola Zero, real Coke taste and zero calories. And by ITT Technical Institute, providing you a place to prepare for your digital future. Now, why are you guys drinking Coke Zero? We're not. We're drinking Coke, buddy. But it says Coke Zero on the bottle. Well, they must have messed up then and put Coke in the wrong bottle. I don't see what you... Okay, eyeball. Why don't you try it for us? Oh, I forgot you can't. You don't have a mouth. No mouth. Well, while we're busy drinking Coke, why don't you go stand in front of a hair dryer or something? Yeah, a hair dryer. What? Real Coke taste. Zero calories. All I knew was I wanted to work on electronics, obviously. I wanted to have a really successful career at it. My name is Nathaniel Carpenter. I am an information systems analyst. Well, I got my education from ITT Technical Institute. My wife thinks that my choice to go to ITT Tech has definitely helped me to reach the goals that I have for myself, my wife, and our life together. To be able to pick and choose where we want to go and also the lifestyle that we want to live. What I liked about ITT Tech was the fact that um, I liked everything about ITT Tech. <laughs> We are educators helping people build a foundation for the rest of their lives. ITT Technical Institute, education for the future. Call 1-800-372-4052 or visit us on the web. Get an education that can help you reach your goals. ITT Tech has information on financial aid for those who qualify. Call 1-800-372-4052.
Before you go back to school, make sure you see the scariest product placement movie of the summer. Instinct, only from Sprint. Featuring lightning fast internet, starring killer texting, and with special guest voice cued GPS navigation. Find 125 Lake Drive. Turn right two miles. Going back to school? Get the new Samsung Instinct, now playing for just $129.99, only on the Now Network. Visit instinctthephone.com. <laughs> There's one show out there that keeps coming up. Pearl. Uh, it's good, unclean fun. Eat it! Eat it! The greatest gag reflex competition ever mounted. Don't puke, brother! Don't puke, eat more! It's gastronomic molestation. It will bring about the imminent destruction of the human race. Reality TV that's turning heads and stomachs. Pearl. All new Sunday at 7, only on G4. Power of Energizer E squared Lithium, the world's longest lasting AA battery and high tech devices. Energizer, keep going. New Mentos Gum, irresistibly fresh. We are going to be in the game. Wake up, Tromley. You're missing the invasion. How come we can't ever invade a cool country with, like, chicks in bikinis? You gotta see past the different clothes they wear. I mean, these are people in this country. In seven days, Carl Conrad, the coolest geek in the world, will be watching Comic-Con 08 live on G4. With exclusive coverage of the hottest movies, comics, and TV shows like Wolverine, Watchmen, Star Trek, Terminator Salvation, Heroes, Lost, and Star Wars The Clone Wars. If the coolest geek in the world is watching, shouldn't you? Comic-Con 08 live, status next Thursday at 7, only on G4. G4 is like a clan of plasma pixies who satisfy your every entertainment indulgence. You know, kinda. Uh, this year and last year seem to be all about uh, software. Do you think maybe in E309 there'd be uh, more focus on hardware? You know, I wouldn't be surprised if we start seeing hints of next generation consoles pretty soon. I, I don't think next year, but definitely by, we're gonna hear hints of it yeah. and rumblings following you. Well, as developers get to know the hardware they're working on, the software will get better. So, you know, here's, you know, hoping for more software driven in the future. Yeah, look, I, I, when, the, when the PlayStation first came out, everybody said, where are the games? What are they going to look like? Mm -hmm. Look, they, they were definitely first gen style games. Yeah. You give the developers a little time, they figure out how to program for the processors, yeah. the games start looking better. So there's no incentive for them to, to focus on the hardware right now. The software is really just starting to reach its full potential on these So systems. you think next, next year or the year after? I think by next year, we're going to see rumblings. I mean, Sony probably wouldn't want that. Microsoft it has every reason to, to start kind of dropping hints about a new console. You know, they're in the lead right now. Do you think even back off, America. you think? Just back off and let them do what they're going to No, look, I, I understand do. why, because, I mean, now they're trying to, I mean, when these consoles were shipped and announced, they, they're now trying to cram all these features, like, you know, watching yeah. the movies online, and, and now you can sing and dance, and there's and cameras built in, every, there's yeah. all this stuff. You know, and so you're buying all these uh, other peripherals and stuff. Give them another year, give them another two years, they'll really figure out where they want to go with the future of that kind of, like, all-in-one living room box full of entertainment, yeah. and then they'll start announcing it. So probably two years, Microsoft two years. will announce something. All right, yeah. well, we'll be here. All right, this is E308 Live, presented by Wendy. Thanks for putting down the controller to watch, guys. <laughs> We've been busy all week peering into your gaming future, and right now the action continues. We're sending it out to the show floor again to check in with our G4 troublemakers who are mixing it up down there. Blair is having no trouble getting his hands on the new Command and Conquer Red Alert 3. All right, guys, I'm hanging out with Chris Corey, executive producer of Command and Conquer Red Alert 3. Now, now Chris, the Command and Conquer series, the franchise, it's long, it's storied, it's been around forever. It seems like as long as there have been games, there's been a Command and Conquer game. What separates this from the other ones? Well, first of all, 
This is a spiritual successor to the first two. There hasn't been a Red Alert uh, game in seven years, so we're back in style. We have those live action cinematics that people are used to with uh, mainstream Hollywood talent all in HD. So uh, that fast, fun, humorous tone is definitely there. But in Red Alert uh, 3 this time, we're bringing a co-op campaign. So still uh, a tightly scripted campaign experience, uh, but now you can go online and pull in one of your buddies and play through that. Uh, and we're bringing Navy into the heart of the game design. Okay. So a lot of RTSs kind of keep uh, Navy at arm's length, but we're uh, with the amphibious units and base building on water and resources on water, we're, uh, we're bringing Navy into the center as well. So uh, a lot of exciting things coming together there. Very nice, and like you said, it's been seven years since the last Red Alert. However, this time around, consoles are powerful enough and people are interested enough to bring an RTS to a console. How cool is it to develop for the 360? So it's awesome. I mean, uh, Red Alert 3 will actually be our fourth console RTS, uh, and uh, we feel like we get a little better at it every time, and I think uh, Red Alert 3 is going to be our best one next. So uh, PC 360 uh, coming late this fall. Awesome, man. We'll look forward to seeing it. Back to you. Now, if you're ready for some football, Madden yeah. 09 is actually ready for you. Adam and Morgan are on the floor, and they've got a look at the newest player in the long-running Madden series. Over the years, EA's Madden franchise has reshaped and redefined the way football is played by gamers. What started out as a simple sprite-based football game has evolved into the ultimate football experience with realistic player models, dynamic camera angles, and features that recreate every aspect of gridiron conflict from the coaching to the commentary. With Brett Favre leading the way, Madden 09. Joining us today is Madden 09 senior producer Phil Frazier. Thank you so much for bringing us the game. No problem. Now, now, Phil, obviously every year we expect to have a new roster, but you really have done a lot of changes with this. I think one of the big ones is the virtual trainer. How does that work? Well, Madden NFL 09 is the first sports game that actually adapts to you as a player, and the way we do that is through the virtual trainer. And you know, Tyrone's playing the game here, and he's showing us a brand new way of, of actually playing Madden. And this is a virtual holographic environment where you get to run through drills, and we actually assess how good you are at the game. Uh, from the best to the worst. So if you're great, we're going to make the game even harder. And if you're not so great, we're actually going to tune the game so it's a little bit easier for you, but so you still have a lot of fun. So what kind of plays can you run? Is it, or is it just the quarterback plays? We have 12 different drills available. And, okay. the, and the key is you get to play from the running back to the quarterback to the defense as well. And we really assess you on all aspects of football game play. Now, now how does that work exactly, that it figures out how good you are and it cha changes the game, but then assuming that you're getting good playing the game, how does it then adjust to that? Well, as you play Madden, you know, as you leave the virtual trainer and go to a regular play now experience, we're constantly reevaluating through statistics and through how you're playing the game. So, you know, if you lose a game, your you're, you're, you're actual level of ability will probably go down, and if you're doing well, it'll probably continue to go up. So there's a lot of pressure now with every game. It is. There's, there's more pressure now. And the nice thing is, is you actually get to play people that are probably higher than your level because it actually is it's a great handicapping feature. You know, as a, as a new user, we'll adapt the game to you. And then on the flip side, we'll have a, an experience on the other end where you can play a hardcore guy that's very good at the game that will provide a very balanced experience. All right, well, let's load up the uh, game now because I know people are going to want to yes. take a look at the actual sort of graphics improvements sure. and, and the... Um, visuals that they're going to see. Now there is going to be a 20th anniversary version of this game. It is a 20th anniversary of Which I know map, just yeah. made all of our viewers feel really old. Me as I well. already feel old. I'm just older now. <laughs> Me as well. Okay. Yeah. Um, and there's a special version of Madden that's inside. There is. Uh, Madden this year, it is the 20th anniversary. We're shipping at $89.99. It's shipped with NFL Head Coach, which is a brand new product for us. It's a fantastic game for those that like to coach football uh, instead of just playing the game. It also comes with bonus video content. You actually get to watch old videos, bloopers, uh, highlights of Brett Favre, who's our cover guy. It comes with a version of Madden 93, so if you like the Genesis version of Madden, you get to relive that experience as well. A little nostalgia, people like that. A little bit for you. All right, so what are we looking at right now? So this is in-game now, and, and as you can see, the game from top to bottom looks fantastic graphically. You know, you, you notice right away that the grass is brand new this year, and since the grass is almost like the ocean for our game, it takes up 75% of our screen. We wanted to make sure it looks fantastic. You know, on top of that, you're seeing some new presentation elements, new banners that are actually going to flip on the screen. Uh, we have Tom Hammond and Chris Collinsworth as play-by-play -play and color for the game. Uh, this here is an all-new eSports backtrack, which is a great new feature for us. So, so how does that work? You know, backtrack is about showing you opportunities you may have missed. So, you know, we've always shown you replays. 
And in this case, we're showing UA Sports Backtrack, which is a case where you took a sack and there was a wide open receiver on the field. So you'll notice on the screen here, we're actually gonna highlight the receiver that was open and that you should have thrown the ball to instead of taking a sack. And the cool thing about EA Sports Backtrack, and you'll see it here in a moment once Backtrack is done, is that we have a great new feature called EA Sports Rewind that actually allows you to go in and instead of just relying on your memory to kind of relive the situation and get it right the next time, you can actually rewind that play just like you are right here and try that situation again and try to hit that open receiver. So who is this feature really aimed at? Is this aimed at people who are just learning how to play Madden and is it helping them get into the series or is it helping add new depth for the more experienced player? It's actually for both. You know, the, the great thing about Backtrack is designed really to help the casual guys but if you have a high Madden IQ in the game, we actually add another level of detail to the back end where we show you what plays you called, who was hot routed on that play, and what percentage chance success you should have had in that situation. Now, I, I, I don't know if our viewers at home caught it, so Tyrone screws up again, which I hope he does, because I like to see it when he screws up. But, uh, I mean, you have dynamic commentary explaining to the player what they did wrong, which is, I mean, it, that's quite incredible given the amount of voice work that must have gone into that. It is, and, and Chris Collinsworth is the guy that did backtrack for us, and Chris is fantastic this year in our game. Uh, in addition to backtrack, I mean, he's got tens of thousands of lines of commentary. He ad-libbed almost every line in the game. You know, we gave him a situation, you know, in that case, it was a quarterback took a sack and there was an open receiver on the play. And instead of reading from the script, which, you know, sometimes it can sound like it's being read from the script, he actually added the line, which, which sounds great in the game. And, and like you said, backtrack, all those situations, we have great commentary to really break down what you missed on that play. So what version of the game are we going to be seeing? Uh, you're going to see it on pretty much every platform known to right. man. We've it's got, Madden. Yeah, I mean, it's, right, it's the Madden. Wii version is going to be any different, or how is the Wii version going to The Wii version is very different. So we, okay. we, we've announced a new all-play brand for, for Madden and for EA Sports in general. And the great thing about Madden all-play is that it's designed for everybody. You know, we, we went to, to a lot of Wii customers out there and really asked them what Looks they wanted like to see in a sports game. So we've got all new experiences in the game from I'm a five-on-five sure five mode. And they're, they're all designed to kind of get you up and off the couch, let you experience Madden through using gestures, and just have more fun playing the game. So let's talk about the online real quick, because we're running out of time. So let's sure. talk, about, talk about some of the new online options. You know, the biggest thing in online, you know, online for Madden is huge. We have online leagues this year. So for the first time ever in Madden, you and up to 31 of your friends can get together and play in a major league, play for a championship game. We've got trades, we've got a, you know, we've got a draft system in place. It's a really cool way to play Madden with your friends online and not just have to worry about your online record. Wow, the draft system, that sounds kind of interesting. Yeah, I mean, this is, these are some phenomenal changes from the last Madden. Are we gonna see this level of change in next year's version, or? That's the hope. I mean, yeah, we're already working on Madden 2010 now, and you know, I'd love to start talking about it, but uh, we've got a great product here that comes out next month on August 12th, and, and I, I mean, I think it shows, I think it shows itself, quite frankly. I mean, it looks fantastic, uh, it plays great, it's more responsive than ever, and with the 20th anniversary collection edition, you actually get a second product, you get a lot of cool retro features as well. It's a great year for us. No, it is. Cool. Thank you so much for coming by. No, we thank we you. really appreciate it. Let's uh, step it back so much, to the G4 Studios. Early. It's your Olivia Munn. That's what <laughs> you say. And then step on someone I can't stop. <laughs> Adam will be back in our studio in just a little bit for some final thoughts yes. on the old E3. But right now, let's check in with Flitz for his third and final day in the middle of the action. Of course, Flitz, as G-Force, duly elected super fan. What have you learned, buddy? Hey, it's Flitz, and I am at the end of my E3 adventure. I'm on the first floor, and it's, there's a ton of games going on around here. I've played them all. Rock Band was absolutely amazing. I had probably the most fun with that. It's constantly surrounded. There's going to be a whole slew of new games to play when Rock Band 2 comes out. I played Killzone, though I could barely get to it. It has to be the most beautiful game at the show, and I really look forward to it as a gamer. I've been upstairs, I've been downstairs, and I've been upstairs again. Upstairs, full of conference rooms, full of different companies, each room having their own soul, giving some of their soul and their newest products to you. I had a great time. I've had an exciting time, and I would just like to thank G4 for bringing me out. Uh, I hope you guys keep me, honestly. I mean, really. <laughs> What's keeping you from keeping me? So, I guess I should go now. But I'll be back! <laughs> I'll be back! Oh, oh, he's gonna thank be you, Fletch. He'll be back! <laughs> You're one of the few civilians that made it into E3 that wasn't arrested, and I hope you enjoyed the experience and the t-shirts and the E3 flu. And he will be back. <laughs> we'll see you next week at Nerd Prom, and they have their own flu there as well, so yeah. be careful. That's the yeah. Comic-Con. We will see mm -hmm. you there. Now, earlier in our expo, we asked you, who won E3, Microsoft, Sony, or Nintendo? And 57% of you think that Microsoft was the best in show. 
Very impressive. Now, later on, wow. you will find out if Adam, Kevin, and I agree with you. But it's not over till it's over, and I'm telling you, it's not over. That's right. Still ahead, Morgan will give us a look at Will Wright's spore. So stay tuned, everybody. That's exciting. Love it. E308 Live is brought to you by Wendy's. It's way better than fast food. It's Wendy's. Wendy's 99 cent crispy chicken sandwich is made with all white meat. Because if it's not all white meat, it's a gray area. And I don't like gray areas in my chicken. The 99 cent crispy chicken sandwich, it's way better than fast food. It's Wendy's. Q Horsepower is here. And no leading synthetic oil delivers more power than Q Horsepower. Unleash all your horses. Hello, Charlie. Be back Friday. Hello, Mom. Have a nice trip. Hello, Mom. It's time to say goodbye to goodbye. Mom? Hey, honey. Listen to this. Wow. It's time to stop worrying about how long you talk from home. Hello, folks. Have a wonderful day now. Hello. T-Mobile introduces a revolutionary home phone service. No, no. Everything's fine. Yeah. Eddie, look. We could be saying hello to this rain by the weekend. T-Mobile at home. Just $10 a month. I love you, too. Say goodbye to goodbye. Hey, it's ja unglaublich, dass dich gibt. Ewigkeit ist hier. Yeah. Aber gut schaust du aus. Deck los. Was mit dir, Mama? Spit out your stride gum and chew another piece already. Or we'll find you. Get his gum. Got it? Let's get out of here. The ridiculously long-lasting gum. New stride sweet cinnamon. Guys that sweat a lot have to have a backup plan. Well, there's a better plan. Gillette Clinical Strength Antiperspirant. Powerful wetness protection. 34% better than a prescription product. A lot more confidence. Hey, Jason, you got that report, right? You bet. There's something different about you. Did you get a haircut? Gillette Clinical Strength Antiperspirant. Change your life, not your shirt. Now more than ever, you want to get the most for your money. Look no further than the rugged V6 2008 Kia Sportage. Fuel efficient, five-star safety rated, backed by an industry-leading warranty, and it's priced about $6,000 less than a Toyota RAV4 Limited. Or to put it another way, a whole year's worth of groceries less. The Kia Model Year End Event. It's money well saved. Now get 0% APR or up to 3,000 cash back on the 2008 Sportage. Auto insurance wasn't something I used to get animated about until I switched to insurance. Paul is an actual insurance customer. Here we go, Paul. With competitive rates and quote by print convenience, insurance makes it easy to save time and money on car insurance. And don't forget, if you ever run into any trouble, special agents are here to help you 24-7. Who knew I could be so drawn to my auto insurance company? Take a fresh look at your auto insurance. Get your quote from insurance today. What if I told you there's a quick and easy way to get today's most popular stuff for free? All you need is internet access. Answer a few questions, then tell us where to send your free gift. It's fast, it's easy, and it's real. Thousands of people have already claimed their free gift. I thought it was too good to be true. Then I got my free Xbox. I got a free Xbox for my son. An offer like this doesn't come around every day. Check out the website now and get your free gift. You can burn me, you can shoot me, but you can't kill me! You're familiar with the death race. It's all about ratings, fast cars, pretty women. Win and get your freedom. Sounds like the odds are stacked against us. Do what you do best. Drive. You're one of the monsters. Oh, you've got one. That's entertainment. Get out of my car! Wait it all. Starts August 22nd. This August, X-Play's got game as Adam and Morgan travel the globe bringing you the biggest gaming conventions in the world. You want to see them, and we've got them. Starting with G4's fan-favorite award show, g Then on to Germany's Leipzig, Europe's battleground for console domination. And PAX, Washington's huge indie gamer culture party. So you just got done playing Metal Gear Solid 4? I gotta say, this is now one of the must-have games. This August, X-Play's got game all month long starting August 7th. Part of G4 Stay Out of the Sun Summer. Welcome back, everybody, to E308 Live from
presented by Wendy's. We've seen some amazing new games debut this year, and there's still even more to come. Plus, we'll reveal who we think the big winner of E3 is, uh, E3 2008. E3 right. 2008, yes. But first, there's also some pretty weird stuff out there as well. There is. Right now, let's go to the show floor with Chris, who has E3's oddest games. Okay. The most innovative stuff obviously comes from thinking outside the box, so it is appropriate that Indicade is actually outside the main box of the show floor. This is kind of buried in the corner, but over here is where I think you find the most awesome artistic punk kind of games. Let's check it out. All right, so uh, I'm here at uh, JoJo's Fashion Show. Greg, you designed this game. What was on uh, What was on your brain? Well, we were trying to make a fashion game where it allowed people to be creative and, uh, and dress people how they wanted, kind of uh, allow them to express themselves a little bit. Is it weird if I just stare at these models in their underwear? Well, eventually you'll lose if you do that. I want to dress these sluts. Matt, I, I don't know why I would not stop at a dastardly looking game entitled The Misadventures of PB Winterbottom. Uh, will you tell us a little bit about it? Well, basically the game is about two things. Stealing delicious pie and breaking the time-space continuum to steal more pie. So it's, it's a time travel pie game? Absolutely, yeah. Holy crap, this is awesome! Whee! Darkroom sex game. Yeah. What's that all about? Well, it's a game where you emulate sex using your Wiimote. You play it in the dark, and if you can find a partner, you can have a great time. No graphics. Don't need them. No. I have totally dug my time here at the Indicade display, so uh, check out their website if you get a chance. Dark sex game for the week, so pie game. Pie, is it? Does so, that mean I can search for virtual pie and not get fat? Misadventures of Oman. Oh Telling my you. gosh. Do it week soon. I will totally do that. All right, guys, uh, first of all, let's thank Chris and just stay on yeah. for a little bit. Well done, it's, hard work. You're doing a good job. Now, our next game isn't even out yet, and it's already inspired a new word, Sporn. Morgan's back at the convention center with a look at Will Wright's Sporn. Will Wright, the genius who brought us The Sims, is about to debut another revolutionary game, Spore. This time, you'll be overseeing an entire universe. Players start by creating a single-celled organism. With some development and exploration, your simple design can evolve into a highly intelligent, super-advanced space-traveling species. The uniqueness of Spore and its ever-expanding gameplay has generated a ton of excitement. Thanks to the just-released Creature Creator program, you can start playing God today. Joining us today from Electronic Arts is executive producer Lucy Bradshaw. Thank you so much for joining us today and bringing us four, which is very high concept. Yeah. So maybe you could compress the concept into a few short sentences for our viewers. Sure. Really, as the player, you get to create this little cell, and you start as a single cell in this tide pool, surviving and evolving your species every step of the way through a cell, creature, tribal, civilized, and then out into the cosmos where you explore space. So how's my little um, cellular friend gonna survive in this crazy soup of a world? Well, as you can see, I mean, there's competition, <gasps> people are coming after them. <laughs> You've gotta eat to grow and earn DNA points, which allows you to get into the creature creator where you can put on parts that you've found that give you new abilities and help you compete. So how do you make your computer, your computer, your creature be able to compete in this world? Well, as you evolve, what you're doing is you're earning DNA points, whether you're in the cell or creature stage, and then you can spend those on parts that you've found. Parts have abilities, things like sneak or attack or bite. Looks or like slash. we got a little armor. Well, here right you here. are in the tribal editor where you're giving him an outfit that enhances his abilities like armor so that he can compete right. with other tribes that might develop during the tribal stage of the game. Okay, so there are five unique stages of the game. What, which stage are we looking at right here? Right now we're looking at the tribe stage where you have to sort of dominate your continent and there are going to be other species, tribes that develop around you and hopefully you can either take them out or befriend them. Now, um, gamers have actually, you know, we've, we've been following for Spore for a while. Gamers are incredibly excited about Spore, as I'm sure you know, as any, you know, whenever anybody talks about the release date, <laughs> gamers start to go into a little bit of a panic. Um, wh what have we, what sort of new that we can tell gamers that we haven't really seen that much of before? Well, some of the stuff that you might not have seen or heard about, you know, yeah. the two stages that are RTS stages, Tribe and Civ, they really have quite a bit to go with. Um, for instance, the religious civilizations where you kind of drive up in these large, you know, sort of, Reaching, you know, creations and holograms come out to take over other cities. Um, the other big thing is really this concept of consequence. The decisions that you make early in the game really do have ramifications and give you unique abilities. So if you decided to be a carnivore in uh, the cell stage, 
that's going to make you a more aggressive creature and you have a unique creature ability in the creature stage. And again, later in space. So, I mean, how complicated is the game going to be once you get out of the cellular stage? I mean, is it going to challenge RTS fans or is it going to be available to everybody? You know, one of the things that we did is we wanted to balance it for a lot of different player types. So we gave three levels of difficulty. You can play in easy, medium, or hard mode. And you choose that when you start? Absolutely. Okay. So the planet that you choose, you decide that right when you make it you know, to the first planet. And is that going to affect the, the different creatures that are going to populate your planet? Yeah, and a little bit as to how they challenge you. So it'll be a little bit more forgiving if you're playing in easy mode. And if you're playing in hard, I can tell you that even some of the best players on our team are really kind of challenged with it. So when I have my creature, uh, because it's sort of massively single player, and we should explain that a little bit to people who don't understand that. Well, that's a little uh, phrase that Will coined himself. Yeah. And what that means is, while you have your own galaxy that you're controlling everything, and then everything you encounter is controlled by the computer, the thing that's interesting massive about it is that every creation that you see, all the other content, is content that's been made by other players. So like, we released the creature creator, and already we have like 1.7 million creatures on our Sporpedia. These are going to be the creatures that populate your first planet. Right. So when you get the game and you emerge onto land as a creature, you're going to see the creations that other players have made. And, and the bad creations are going to die off, aren't they? <laughs> In fact, they will. You can extinct them. And that'll right. send a message back to their creator <gasps> saying, you've it been will? extincted. Yep. That's kind of sad. <laughs> well, you know, it's funny, <laughs> but it may go on to live and survive in another player's galaxy. So you never know what's going to happen in Spore. But, but so would, would you be able to know if your creature's been incredibly successful within the game, or you just have to send your children out and let them fare as they will? <laughs> well, that's one of the things that we're doing to make it that massively you know, experience. Yeah. We've got this thing called the Sporepedia. It's almost like a social net built right into the game. You can kind of check on events that have happened with some of your creations, achievements that you have made right. or your buddies have made, or you can, you can even restrict the content that you get to just your buddies. All right, thank you so much for dropping by. We're very excited to play. That's all for me today. I'm going to hit the show floor. Back to you guys. Thanks, Morgan. Now go home and rest. You deserve it. But first, try to sneak a copy of Score back for yeah, us. Little thumb drive. And waiting for a long time. Get out time. of there, Sly Cooper style. <laughs> Don't go anywhere. After the break, we'll weigh in on who we think was the king of the hill at this year's E3. Probably has something to do with Pi. And don't forget, you can get up to the second E308 News, exclusive videos, screenshots, and more at g4tv.com slash E3. You guys stick around, we're ending the show. You don't want to miss it. Right. E308 Live is brought to you by Wendy's. It's way better than fast food. It's Wendy's. Wendy's 99 cent crispy chicken sandwich is made with all white meat. Because if it's not all white meat, it's a gray area. And I don't like gray areas in my chicken. The 99 cent crispy chicken sandwich, it's way better than fast food. It's Wendy's. Your teeth are a living part of your body. And over time, the enamel begins to weaken from the inside. But now you can help rebuild your teeth. New Trident Extra Care, the only gum with Recaldin, a unique form of calcium that penetrates into and strengthens tooth enamel. Trident Extra Care, chew strong. Unleash your inner rock star, the Aerosmith way. Guitar Hero Aerosmith, rated T. Well, well, General Jack O'Neill. We come in peace. He lies. He does that, you know. The ultimate Stargate movie experience. Stargate Continuum. On DVD and Blu-ray High Def, July 29th. Millions of people have discovered a secret to truly healthy hair, and even the men are talking about it. Whatever was in that bottle worked. It made my hair feel amazing. It was, like, really shiny. This is kind of weird, because... Dudes don't really talk about their hair being soft. It feels good on the scalp. The scalp is happy. The hair is happy. I want to know. What is it? It's Advanced Head & Shoulders Shampoo and Conditioner. Really? Shut up. <laughs> when you think Head & Shoulders, you think dandruff. They have upped their game, I guess. The Advanced Head & Shoulders Collection. Truly healthy hair starts at the scalp. There's one. There's another one. Get more than you ever imagined when you trade your games for something new at GameStop, where 150 titles are worth $15 or more. Power to the players.
Excuse me, miss. Yeah, what can I get you guys? Yeah, we need a woman's opinion. Yeah, see, we say the first thing a woman notices about a guy is his shoes. Mm -hmm. And you're all wearing Skechers. Nice. Wow. Yeah, I told you. No and then? For me, personality. Which means you two guys are in trouble. Oh. Nice. And here we go. Get inside the most anticipated film this year, The Dark Knight, a G4 special preview, coming up next. Can you say free triple score.com three times fast? Free triple score.com, free triple score.com, free triple score.com, free triple score.com. What, what's free triple score.com? Free triple score.com, free triple score.com. Why is free triple score.com the best place to go get my credit score? Free triple score.com gives you all three credit reports and scores from the three top bureaus. And best of all, they're free when you try Privacy Matters. One, two, three. Really get all three for free? Why do I need to check all three of my credit reports and scores? <laughs> one credit report doesn't tell you the whole story. You could have good credit on one report, and on the other two, you could have harmful information that could keep from getting a loan, and in some cases, keep you from getting a job. Not knowing your credit score could be a big mistake. I didn't know my credit score could keep me from getting a job. Lenders look at all three credit reports, shouldn't I? Three really is better than one. Where can I get all three? Where can I get all three? Where can I get all three? Log on to freetriplescore.com where you can get three for free. freetriplescore.com If you're not watching Code Monkeys, then you're missing out. Give me the best boob job 200 bucks can buy on the best 8-bit animated series in history. Quick, help me put them in my mouth. Code Monkey Season 2. I'm home. Where's my dinner, bitch? Ow! All new episodes Sunday night at 10. Part of G4 Stay Out of the Sun Summer. Before we pull up our tents and wander off to prepare ourselves for the new releases, it's time to decide who this year's big winner was. The news and announcements are over. Let's see who won. Time to go head to head. Today marks the end of E3 2008. And over the last few days, we've brought you coverage of everything. Of course, it's not a competition, but people always want to know who won. Was it Microsoft with their upcoming system update? The casual gamer and all the new music games to rock out to? Or the hardcore gamers who have countless new titles to look forward to? Adam Sessler, glad you made it back in one piece. Safe. Safe but not sound. And by the way, now, at, for those who don't know, Adam was really the reason half of this E3 coverage yes. even happened. So yeah, huge thank you to Adam. Oh, oh, yeah. 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 We have seen a lot this past week, but Kevin, uh, who do you think won the yeah, show? Yeah, I want to know. Uh, I mean, the, 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 the cheesy answer is that the gamers won. Because we really did. Uh, I mean, there was something yeah. for everybody, yeah. whether you're casual, hardcore, or you just want a box in your living room where you can watch TV. But, but you have to pick a company, one. I'm going to say Microsoft, because they had the most yeah. for all those gamers. The hardcore gamers had Gears 2 and Fallout 3, which looked amazing. Uh, there's plenty for the casual gamers between the lips and the, 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 the we're in the movies, or you're in the movies, or <laughs> my grandma's movie. in the movies, yeah. and I got to set up. <laughs> my live camera for her. And of course, the major system update. I mean, now with Netflix integration and avatars, love them okay, or hate well, them, at least they're there. Well, speaking of avatars, I mean, some people seem to be kind of unhappy that Microsoft is going the avatar route, but with Netflix and everything else, I mean, doesn't their upcoming system update seem to have something for everyone, Adam? I, I, I would definitely say so. I mean, I've always said, having the avatar will not affect how good Fallout 3 is. So why not just serve both needs? And then I, exactly. I think that's the important thing, and that what I do want to reiterate, without sounding cheesy, is that the winner is the hardcore gamer. And that you know, a lot of the hardcore gamers somehow think that when things go casual, that they are somehow being abandoned in the process. Mm -hmm. And that's not the case. Everything that we had up there on that stage right. is a good, solid game. Not all of them are of the same quality, 
But those, like, what, 35 games? Yeah. Right. Oh, they're which coming probably out in the next 30 year. were for the hardcore gamer as exactly. well. So it was all service to them. I mean, really, I think the biggest issue is you need to actually have a pretty good job to play as many of the good yes. quality games yeah. that are going to be coming out. I'm going to be looking on Craigslist for one very soon. <laughs> I can't <laughs> wait. Well, I, you know, I think that the casual games really stood out, like Lips, Rock Band 2, Wii Music, because yeah. they had those new features like being able to import your own songs, right. create your own tracks, which I think really gave those diehard gamers what they've been craving. But also, you know, with this kind of, uh, these kind of games, people really want just a great party experience exactly. and these games have great songs and you know to jam to. Yeah, I think people saw saw Wii Music and immediately their knee jerk reaction because they didn't see anything hardcore mm -hmm. at the Nintendo press conference was to say this might not be for me. This is terrible. Yeah. This is a toy. Yeah, you know what? It, it might is. be a toy yeah. and you might have a lot of fun with it. So give exactly. it a try. It doesn't mean that there aren't hard, more hardcore games out there. But for what you. about you? What what made your head explode? What made my head explode? Um I think <laughs> Fallout 3, I think yeah. definitely way back on Monday. That was just kind of giddy fun. It was, it was, it was better than It really than I was thought. absolutely amazing. And Little Big Planet for me was yeah. just also that was a great like game. the it fact was... that, that, that it's not just about a game, it's about a com creating a community mm -hmm. that can actually create for the games. Yeah. That, that to me is like the new trend in gaming. And I love that co op is coming back around. So glad to see more games going co op. All right, you guys, this year's E3 has definitely been one to remember. That is it for E3's Head to Head. All right, we've done our best. We've given you four <laughs> awesome days of E3 access. It's still not over. No, it's not. G4 Stay Out of the Sun Summer continues as our week-long coverage of E3 concludes tomorrow night at 8 with X-Play's Best of E3 Awards. Check out G4TV.com slash E3 for additional E3 content. And do not forget, we will be back tomorrow night at 7 p.m. for an all-new live yes. attack of the show. We've had some time with the iPhone 3G. We're going to run down our favorite apps and let yes. you guys know exactly how to get them. And then it's Batman. Woo! We'll talk about the Dark Knight. Yeah! Why so serious? Why so serious? I just realized the movie's coming out. Yes, it's coming out. There's three. I completely forgot about that. Mama Mia is also coming out. Oh, really? Not first. I don't want to see it again. I'm Chris Nolan. I hope you'll stick around as G4 takes a very special look at my new film, The Dark Knight.